Mm-hmm. We could hear it, and I thought it was great. Well, I just put us live, so that went live. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'm going to wait until I get confirmation that the audience can hear us, and then I'll start. Uh, okay, they're saying that they can hear us. All right. So hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Role of Play, the Virginia Tech University Library's RPG live play on Twitch. I'm Anthony Wright Day Hernandez. I'm the Community Collections Archivist with Special Collections and University Archives here at the library. Some of you in the Twitchiverse might know me as Rogan27. Uh, tonight, I will be the team's handler or GM. Uh, this is only the second RPG session I have ever GM'd, so hopefully everybody will go easy on me. Uh, <laughs> Before I have our agents introduce themselves, I want to acknowledge the Tudelo and Monacan people who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we work and live and recognize their continuing connection to the land, water, and air that Virginia Tech consumes. We pay respect to the Tudelo and Monacan nations and to their elders past, present, and emerging. I also want to acknowledge the university's historical ties to the indentured and enslaved whose labors built this institution. We pay respect to these people and recognize that Virginia Tech would not be what it is today without their labor. During the stream, we ask that the viewers please remember to be kind and courteous to each other. All right, so let's have our agents introduce themselves. How about we start with um, Crowfoot. Oh, so I am Jonathan Bradley, uh, pronouns he, him. Uh, I am the head of studios and innovative technologies at the university libraries. Um, in terms of play and how it relates to my life, um, as the head of studios, I get to sort of ensure that our policies leave a place for play um, with how people interact with our studios. And I also get to advocate for things like funding to sort of ensure that those um, non-academic projects have a place and don't necessarily fall by the wayside because well, there's just not money to do that. So it's one of my great privileges in my work to try to encourage play, uh, for all students and, and the greater Virginia Tech community. Um, my experience for role-playing previously, uh, I started with second edition. Um, I think that was about 10 years ago, um, playing with some college friends when I was in graduate school. Um, since then I have uh, DM'd multiple campaigns and I've played in characters uh, in multiple campaigns. I've gone from second edition to 3.5. I skipped fourth, uh, but came to 5e. I also spent a little bit of time in um, what's it called? Um, uh, the fantasy age system, um, which I enjoyed a lot, um, but uh, has sort of, for me, been replaced by 5e in its simplicity. Um, and today I'm going to be playing my, uh, my spy name and my code name is Crowfoot Mile. Uh, and I will be playing Clara Baines, who is Australian. Um, she, her pronouns, um, class is a face, um, or the face, I guess I was going to say that right. Um, and subclass, the archetype is, um, the gray woman in the book, it says man, but in this situation, gray woman, uh, which if you don't know is someone who has a tendency to blend in and be forgotten. Um, in general, Clara's personality when she's undercover is very subdued and, um, people forget about her and she's there in a lot of cases she's a doormat people use her to take out their frustrations and she sort of um, submits to that and, and and lets people treat her that way but when she's not undercover she has a tendency to be a it's sort of that pent-up anger coming loose and is a lot more vibrant but that is clara and that's who i'll be playing tonight all right uh how about highcroft sure thing uh, I'm Kayla McNabb. I use she, her pronouns. I'm head of instructional content and design for the university libraries. Uh, and in my work, uh, I create things and I work with creatives. So there's a lot of play kind of inherent in that. Um, and we try to make sure that we remember to have fun when we're creating things to help people learn. Um, as far as experience with role playing, uh, Jonathan and I started playing role playing games around the same time as second edition about 10 years ago. And uh, through folks that I met uh, working in a writing center on campus, uh, and I've played and DM'd mostly D&D since then, uh, 3.5, and then more recently 5th edition, uh, with a little foray into uh, 
fantasy age and some one shots in honey heist um an aliens one shot Mm -hmm. that uh anthony uh game mastered for us and recently uh a game of alice is missing that was a lot of fun um and then as far as my experience with this work of literature in particular uh i haven't read it uh though from anthony's description it does feel quite relatable um so i feel like i'll fit right in um for my uh, agent, I am Highcroft. Uh, she takes her, um, she uses she, her pronouns. She takes her name from a uh, supposedly haunted mansion that was where she grew up in Shaughnessy, British Columbia. Um, and she is the ghost, uh, an infiltrator. Uh, and she's um, collected a few uh, different aliases over the years. Uh, first, um, an alias of um, Violet Harmon, a makeup artist, um, and she uses that to gain access to our headquarters. Uh, and um, then later as an advisor to a politician, uh, Ryan Mack uh, is her name uh, in that role. In that alias, her primary alias, uh, she's very serious and stately, uh, and she rarely cracks a smile, and she prefers to offer verbal agreement or disagreement only when necessary. Uh, She is seen as very level-headed and rational above all else. Um, When uh, in reality, she's not too far from that. Um, Her real name is Arwen Cote, and she is driven and very attentive. Um, She waits until the time is right uh, to make her move. Uh, She is um, very femme presenting, uh, 5'7", and she really likes to uh, fly under the radar. All right. Um, Let's do Jank next. Uh, So, hi, I'm Alex Krasner. I'm a, uh, oh, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, I am both a student here at Tech and I also work uh, with the uh, studios at the lab, at the university libraries. Um, So I am a uh, grad student uh, working on a master's in computer science and uh, I work in the virtual uh, environment studios, at the libraries. So, for how play applies in my, you know, my job, my major and my life. I feel like it's just a very important part of all of the above. I kind of make up board games and card games in my free time on the side. Um, But I don't know. I just kind of incorporate that in everything I do. I don't like just being super like, uh, I feel like if there's no play involved in work, then it, uh, I don't know, it loses some of the fun. (laughs) Uh, Experience with role-playing previously, though. I've played a decent amount of D&D 5e, and then um, I've made some uh, campaigns that haven't run them for Dungeon World and for uh, Blades in the Dark, and I've just read way too many RPG rule books in general, (laughs) so... Uh, I don't know much about this book, though, that the this campaign or this uh, one shot's going to be based on, The Sheep Look Up, um, other than it sounds like it reminds me of the anime Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, which is all, that's the only context I have going into this. Uh, so uh, we'll see how that helps. Um, my character's name is Jank. Um, yeah, exactly like the slang term. Uh, <laughs> um, and I feel like that kind of fits her personality. Her actual name is Alice Codgers, uh, pronouns she, her, where's the list of things. Um, her class is a technician, specifically a gadgeteer. So she just has tons of gadgets, like so many that it filled up a page. Uh, <laughs> uh, she's kind of obsessed with her inventions and all of her creations. She's just really an eccentric scientist. She's Canadian, wears a huge uh, leather trench coat uh, to cover up and hold all of the various inventions um, that 
she brings. But yeah, she's kind of obsessed with her creations and the creations of others as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last, we have Pesky B. That's me. Uh, my name is Philip Hernandez de Wright. Uh, I'm use he, him pronouns. At Virginia Tech, I'm assistant dean of students working in the dean of students office. And so we do a lot of crisis management there. And so play can be really important for stress relief after dealing with crises. So play for me encompasses a lot of things from like playing games with Anthony and some other things and I have to go. So I'll be back later. So uh, yeah, that is the reality of uh, um, Philip's job in the Dean of Students office. Uh, I will uh, cover a little bit of the other things uh, as regards the player um, or the, the character. Uh, so the character that Philip is playing is named uh, Pesky B, or at least that's their code name. Uh, their real name is Reza. Um, they are Indonesian. Um, they, I'm uncertain as to their pronouns, so I'm using they at the moment. Uh, they are a martial artist with a, an athlete background. Um, I know that Philip was kind of thinking of the um, contortionist character from Ocean's Eleven when he built this character. So, um, Beyond that, I'm not 100% certain how uh, personality will go. Um, depending on when Philip gets back, I might invite him to uh, finish the introduction, but um, we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, and if Philip gets called away again, you're just out of, out of touch with Pesky B for that period of time. Um, but for now, uh, let's go ahead and, and move forward. Um, our game tonight is inspired by John Brenner's 1972 novel, The Sheep Look Up. So here's the novel. Um, great cover. <laughs> very, very um, timely. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and for our system, we're using the spy game core rules. Uh, from Black Cats Gaming. Uh, it just came out. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the system, uh, you can find Black Cats Gaming on Twitch and Twitter at follow Black Cats, as well as online at blackcatsgaming.com. Uh, hashtag not sponsored. Um, <laughs> so today uh, we'll be playing in a, in a dystopian world that is dealing with the reality of uncontrolled environmental destruction. Uh, decades of governmental deregulation have allowed corporations to grow to the point where they rival even the largest national governments. The main motivation for these corporations is profit. They pay their workers little, offer little or no health care, and pollute liberally. Yeah. Uh, the Great Lakes and Mediterranean Sea are so polluted that they no longer support life. The death of these waters caused armed conflicts in the surrounding regions. Those conflicts regularly used chemical weapons and defoliants, destroying the agricultural viability of the areas and leading to desperate times for the people living in Southern Europe, the Middle East, Northern Africa, Central Canada, and the Upper Midwest. Most people in this world live paycheck to paycheck. They are consumers in the ultimate company town society. Food is heavily processed and getting fresh fruits and vegetables from Puritan Foods, a syndicate company, is a luxury. Do not drink orders are commonplace and people rely on bottled water when they can get it. Disease is common and almost everyone has some persistent complaint. You are all agents of sanitation, a spy agency run by Liesl Voorhees, a famous actress. Sanitation is focused on protecting the Earth's biosphere. Agency history says that it was originally founded by Austin Train, the prominent environmentalist, sometime after he disappeared from the public eye, and that he continues to direct the agency from the shadows. This may or may not be true. After all, at least 200 people claim to be Austin Train at this point, and no one seems to know his true whereabouts. Sanitation is a secret. Even among other agencies, it is just a rumor. 
It takes on missions deemed of critical importance to the protection of life on Earth and works hard to ensure that its involvement remains unknown. It is not affiliated with any government or corporation. Your headquarters is located under a soundstage at the Veritas Film Group Studios in Vancouver, British Columbia. Agents come and go with regular film studio traffic. Agency assets, such as helicopters, jets, etc., are disguised as, and sometimes used as, film props. More lethal assets are secreted in an underground facility. So, um, you mean secreted? Yes, <laughs> secreted, secreted. Both, really. Where I mean, if you think about um, it, I would really like to have Philip here for the next part. Uh, so let's vamp a little bit and see if he comes back. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, with your introduction, my immediate thought was very uplifting, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. If you've go got to, questions go to... about the general world itself, I'm happy to address some of those. Otherwise, um, I just so, would rather wait to introduce the mission until all of you are present. So I have, um, with the face, uh, I have multiple covers. Like, I think a, the description in the, the book was indistinguishable from a normal lived life. Like, mm -hmm. I assume they take a lot of upkeep. Um, I made one of them be a PA on set. Does that make sense? Um, what does PA stand for? Personal assistant. Okay, thank you. Uh, or that's production what I assistant. Assumed. Or production assistant. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to make sure. Um, yeah, totally. Like uh, one of your covers being something, anything associated with film production would make okay. total sense. Do the um, other agents know of your covers or do we only know one of them? You only you would only know that one because that's which, the one I would one? use to come and go. So that cover is um, uh, Holly Foreman, who is a PA for a big name director uh, who's currently filming a uh, movie on set. Um, she has, I mean, I, I have descriptions for all of her cover identities. I didn't do them all because there's you get a lot for the face, uh, and I want my introduction to be twenty minutes. Um, yeah. But so the, if we were talking to you, we would call you Holly. If if we are out in public and not in our like secret bunker or whatever, yeah. Cool. Um, I'm assuming I'm not in. I'm assuming I'm not in one of my other covers. Uh, <laughs> but uh, like, you don't have a code name. You just have a million covers instead. I do have a code name. It's Crowfoot Mile. But you also probably shouldn't use that in public either. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, I'm I'm not going to delay too much longer. Um, uh, we'll just incorporate Philip when he gets back. So um, on Saturday, you all received the following mission brief from your handler, the producer, while going about your regular day. Greetings, agent. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to shut down Puritan Foods water bottling operation in Tower Hill, Colorado. Their product, water, spelled W-A-T hyphen R, mm. pure and clean, is contaminated with an ergo alkaloid compound linked to a covered up outbreak of ergotism or St. Anthony's fire in Feldspar, Ontario. This outbreak was similar to the one recently seen in Nostri, Tunisia that was widely reported and was linked to the relief shipment of Nutripon from the Bamberley Trust Corporation plant also located in Tower Hill. Puritan Foods security at the plant will be on alert Tower Hill has been in the news a lot lately. There was an avalanche at the Tower Hill Ski Resort five months ago, and the wreckage has become something of a tourist draw. Bamberley has arranged to allow the United States Army to destroy the contaminated stocks of Nutripon in a public display, and the Army and UN observers are on site with laser cannon tanks for that purpose. There are also reports of large numbers of young people vacationing in the mountains this year due to the pollution on the beaches. I wish I could give you time to let things in Tower Hill die down, but time is one thing we don't have. Water is set to launch nationwide in the United States next week, and the first shipment is scheduled to leave the plant on Tuesday, headed for New York City. Find a way into the plant stop them from producing more contaminated water, stop the shipment of contaminated water, and get out 
without revealing sanitation's existence. Oh, that last one's going to get us. <laughs> Note, highly advised to pack your own water. This message will self-destruct in 10 seconds. Shit. <laughs> uh, so that is the mission brief that you got from the producer. Um, and that was a couple of days ago. Uh, you all have arrived in Tower Hill. Uh, it is Monday afternoon. The shipment is scheduled to leave the plant tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. You are currently in a small motel on the south side of town near an industrial park. The Puritan plant is about a mile west of town. Skies are gray. The sun hasn't been seen in the town for the past month due to pol pollution aloft. It is not so bad yet that people need to wear filter masks outside, however. You were provided some basic equipment for the mission. Uh, you have um, a set of two-way radios with earpieces that all of you have a radio. So you've got mm -hmm. comms, uh, two blocks of C4 with a remote detonator, a caliber one tablet with a caliber one Dave's tool, a caliber one micro grenade, a caliber one private unmanned aerial vehicle. So a UAV or drone as we would call it today. How, how big? Also, what is a Dave's tool? Uh, so Dave's tool is a hacking program. Uh. Uh, you should be able to look it up in the book and I could find it for you and give you a description in a minute. Um, and then you all uh, had it. Oh, you also have a caliber one SUV. Um, and you all had a chance to pick some gadgets before you got here. Uh, mm -hmm. But because this is a one shot, we are skipping straight to the mission and uh, skipping the phases where you would gather intel and, and have a chance to plan. Uh, because of that, you each will have one retcon where you can add in a piece of equipment that is essential to your plan that um, since we're not doing the planning phase, you didn't get a chance to pick. So something like if you need specific disguises, uh, we can assume that you've got them. If you need certain IDs, um, because you'll have a chance to kind of discuss your plan now, um, but you're already on site. And so we can retcon in uh, some of those necessary items if you need to. Um, could, could you drop those tools into chat, by the way? That would be super helpful. So uh, are Dave's, Dave's tools? Just No, just, just all the list that you went through. Oh, uh, yeah. I can do it. I got it. Um, so are we sure this hotel we're staying in, I assume we've checked it to make sure it's safe for like talking and we're not like being it's secure. Like, it's secured. So uh, you can. I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is going to be a check. And I would say that that is going to be an espionage check. Espionage. I'm terrible at espionage, <laughs> but I will give it a I shot. I am. Uh, I'm good at that. Ooh, I rolled a nat one. <laughs> mm, that is less you, good. You think um, things are good? I think here's great, guys. <laughs> no, that's not good. Uh, so I check and I rolled a 26. Yeah, a 26. Um, where you are, there are not presently any bugs. Um, you're pretty sure that this was prepared for you by the producer. Um, it, honestly getting a room in this town must have been a feat to begin with uh, which is why you've got one room in a motel uh, that's kind of on the wrong side of town from where you want to be um, but they managed to work some miracles and got you a space and they've already swept it nice all right so we're just chilling planning in the motel uh yeah, yeah. Uh, and at this point, um, right now, it is just Crowfoot, Highcroft, and Jank. Uh, Pesky B hasn't shown up yet. Mm. Probably got caught on a airport. Oh, Stupid delays. <laughs> you are um, you are a couple hours from Denver, and Denver is how you would have come in. Yep. I mean, look how busy this town is. I'm sure the airport plane got delayed. Mm-hmm. How far would the drive be to get to the place? Because we have our SUV. So it is entirely on the opposite side of town. So you are 
in um, you're like the south central part of town, you would have to go through the city center and then off out the west. Um, and it's a mile outside town. Town is probably two or three miles across. So like a minute or two. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. not not terribly far in your SUV. Um, yeah. Is there anything we have different. to worry about with even but getting there? There are a lot of people um, all over town. So there are a lot of people that are um, walking and on foot uh, rather than driving around. I do have, I don't know if you can see it. I will hold up a little. Ooh, town map. Ooh. <laughs> Is an SUV a suspicious thing? Also, did days? you say this was a motel? Or is it a, yeah, like it's a, a motel? It is a motel. So first one story, maybe two if we're lucky. Yeah. And doors that open directly outside. Yep. Um, um, and the, so the SUV was here for you when you got here, provided by the producer. Um, it is uh, basically just a standard stock SUV. Um, and aside from the fact that it is fully electric, uh, Ooh, nice. there is nothing really remarkable about it. And honestly, it being fully electric isn't remarkable. Um, it's only remarkable to us here in 2020. Um, but so uh, how, how did our drone arrive? Is our drone somewhere special? Do we have to go get it? Like the drone is in the, the drone is in the cargo area of the SUV when you okay. arrive. Yeah. How, how so, big is it? Oh. Uh, it's like a standard, like, you know, the little four prop, uh, like square like a, thing that, like that a, you would see today. Like that, a DJI a personal... Phantom available from Media Design Studios. <laughs> uh, sure. I don't know what That's that looks smooth. like, but yeah. basically a little like personal use drone that you would have yeah. that you could buy at like Amazon or someplace today. Okay. Um, it's yeah. that style of drone. It's not like a military drone. Okay. Nice. Okay. Um, but what I was asking basically is you said that people were on foot. Uh, but does that mean there's no cars? Like, is driving an SUV no. to a location something that's very, like, so out of the ordinary during this time that it's suspicious? No, or... no. Uh, people are, are definitely driving around. Um, a lot of people drive electric cars. Um, in this world, uh, the trainites tend to um, vandalize any cars that are not fully electric. Um, and your spy organization is focused on environmentalism, so you have a fully electric um, uh, vehicle. But yeah, people drive all sorts of different kinds of vehicles. Um, it's just that once they got into town, a lot of these, uh, a lot of the young people that have been flooding into town recently um, don't have transport once they get here, and they're just walking around. Uh, so there would be pedestrians and other cars that could impede your uh, rate of travel mm -hmm. across town. And you said that it's departing at 8 a.m. and right now it is? It is uh, the afternoon of Monday. It is departing 8 a.m. on Tuesday. So it's like one or two in the afternoon on Monday right now. All right. All right, um... gents. My plan, just walk inside. <laughs> So it's worked for me before. <laughs> it's not really how I do things. Um, no. I mean, we could have credentials, right? Yeah. To to get in. Um. So my initial thought. And uh, there's a there's a knock on the door. <laughs> knock on the door <laughs> as a fourth person arrives. Yeah. It's like Clara takes out her gun. Oh, I just posed like this, right? <laughs> like... Is somebody going to check that? <laughs> yeah, what's the secret code to get in? Don't shoot me. Philip. <laughs> Where am I? I, I just joined. You, Last you I heard, arrived. I was introducing myself. I knocked on the door. Was it a knock on the door? You just me? arrived and, you. Uh, and knocked on the door of the motel room that you were told to go to. So I'm still behind the door. Hey, Guys, this is pesky B. Code word. Uh, it shouldn't take you this long, Nathan. Rumpel, <laughs> Rumpel Stiltskin? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let them in. 
put the gun All away. Right. Hey, who's Pesky B now that Pesky B has walked into the room? Let me introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my codename is Pesky B. And you should be very happy because I very rarely tell people my real name is Reza. I'm from Indonesia. Uh, but I just feel like I can trust you all with my whole life story. So <laughs> though I'm usually a distrustful person, I would tell you that um, like when the climate started changing, it affected my parents being able to stay in Indonesia. So when I was just a baby, they uh, came to Canada as a refugee, a climate refugee. And we were still pretty poor, but I was pretty good at juggling as a kid. And I turned that into like a street artist thing, juggling. And um, as I would get some money from juggling, I learned that I could also get some other money or help out other people by kind of listening to what's going around me. And I noticed that just by being on the streets and observing things, I could really get into the details of people's lives. And that was probably more um, profitable and helpful to other people than just the juggling. Uh, so I started my, my own, like being a private eye when there was a problem, I try to solve it by my, my street smarts. I am a martial artist by training athlete is, as a juggler. Um, was that everything? I think that was my personality yeah, too. That's fine. I'm a, I'm a quiet, quiet guy. I use he, he, him pronouns. And um, sometimes I can just disappear because uh, I'm really very stealthy. So sometimes uh, I can just take off for a while on my own. So I, I can be a team player, but I just usually go at it on my own and can sneak off without being noticed. So right. yeah, somebody told so, me to come here because as a, I could my skills could be wanted here. So that's why I showed up. And Pesky B uh, was added to the team last minute, did not get the same uh, brief that you got, basically just got a short message instructing them to come here. Uh, so, um, you'll all need to fill Pesky B in on what the mission is. Good one. All right, Pesky B. There's some water. It's bad. Got to make it stop. By tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Can't go out. Poisonous? Huh? Well, gross. She means, sure. she means bottled water. Yeah. It's contaminated. Well, I don't know that I would call Watt er with a dash water. I think that's unfair. It's a presumably hydrating liquid that's been contaminated. We need to stop the shipment from happening at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Before yeah. 8 a.m. tomorrow. Or at... What Jank said. Do we know where the shipment's coming from? There's a factory across town. Warehouse place. So we're, so we're trying to planning. figure out our plan of attack. Did you see our cool SUV outside? It was pretty dark. Yep. I saw an SUV. It's electric. It's the middle of it's, the afternoon. Yeah, in the uh, middle of the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you meant the, the SUV was dark. I came in from underground, so... <laughs> it's black yeah. in color. It's... I'm barely also, saw it. You are presently in Tower Hill, Colorado, uh, up in the mountains. Wait, I thought we were in Vancouver. Canada, yeah. No, we got moved. You are in a motel in Tower Hill, Colorado, in the mountains, about a couple hours from Denver. We're based in uh, Vancouver. Oh. You're, yeah. Is that where, is the, that where the spy agency is based in Vancouver? All right. What did Makes you ask, uh, Pesky B? What did you ask? If that was uh, where they shot The Shining, the hotel for The Shining. <laughs> I don't know. Pesky, <laughs> if you don't know me, I'm Crowfoot Mile, but you can call me Clara. Um, don't have much of a unique life to share with you, and you won't remember it anyway, so it's fine. So, so you are all in the um, motel room uh, because of the rushed nature of this. Uh, you got your note on Saturday telling you you needed to be here. Uh, the mission has to be accomplished before 8 a.m. Tuesday. It is now Monday. Uh, you don't have a lot of intel regarding the uh, plant itself. Um, the agency tried to 
get like blueprints to the building. Um, clearly somebody was uh, counter hacking or there were sufficient efforts in place that in this short amount of time, uh, it was not possible to get that information. Um, aside from the information in your briefing about other uh, people in the area, uh, the US Army, UN observers, the uh, crowds of young people. Um, there's not a lot of information about the situation as it currently stands in town. Uh, so you'll have to scout the facility yourself. Okay. Guys. Well, I say we just, we go there and scout it out. Just take the SUV. So this is my thought. Why doesn't someone take the drone? Mm -hmm. Someone could that. someone could drive by and just see what the on foot situation is going to look like. Uh, I'm going to try to do. I may have an idea for getting me in, and maybe one of you, but I think we're going to ultimately have to take a multi pronged approach to this. So you could use the drone from here. This is a out of character. The drone has range to make it all the way from here to there. Uh, you'd probably have to get closer. That's what closer, I thought. Yeah. So I, I'm pretty sure yeah. we should all we should all go there in the SUV, park in the woods nearby, and then take out the drone and uh, make the rest of the way on foot. Where we then we can split up and do things. But otherwise, uh, we won't be able to even use all of our things. Well. I'm not right. going to hang out in the woods. I got phone calls to make, and that's easy enough to do from <laughs> here. <laughs> All right. Well. Uh, so y'all should gather some intel and come back. I assume we have to make this push tonight. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go. Your range on the, the UAV is five miles. So it is within range. You'd have to find a place to launch it from. The motel. Well, then they're, they're, people are going to see a drone leaving the motel. The, the was not the description of the sky that it's full of of a. Uh, so the ceiling, and... the ceiling is high enough that yeah, people could see it take right. off. Um, it's just it's overcast and nobody's seen the sun here in a month. Uh, also, they make yeah, they make a lot of noise. Yeah, I'd be. I'm willing to go. Uh, on kind of driving through the area and launch the drone. I'll from, go with uh, Highcroft. Closer. So meet back here. And how long do you think it will take you? Maybe an hour, two hours. Two hours. Okay. Two hours. Pesky B, where you going with them? You stay. Yeah, if, I'll go with them. If if the drone doesn't see anybody. I can get pretty sneaky and try to sneak in. Well, it, it we might want to wait until tonight and have a, a plan for how we're going to enter. Mm. Maybe y'all don't sneak in right now in the next two hours. Can you can you agree to that? Okay. We'll keep okay. you on the comms. Okay, that's not an agreement. <laughs> I agree. Okay. I mean, I think if we're infiltrating, well, maybe let's do it at night. Depends. Security is going to be very alert at night still because they know that's when people would want to try and stop them. Uh, okay. So I think it's best that we scout it out. If you need to make calls, make those and we'll keep you on comms. If Do we know when the shipment's going out? 8 a.m. Uh, 8 a.m. in the morning. Tomorrow morning. Sounds like okay. we have it's under 2 12 hours. Now. Oh, it's 2 p.m. We have 10 hours. Wait. Am I right? No, no, we have more than 10 hours. <laughs> we have an amount of time. 18 hours? So I am going to try to get some intel on who is um, who's in charge of business operations at this factory. Um, so my goal would be to use one of my cover identities, uh, Gloria Dracker, who is the supposed... Uh, daughter of the ambassador to Canada from um, the uh, from New Zealand uh, and I want to find out who that is and I'm going to try to set up a meeting to talk about potentially 
um, a business deal that might bring this product to New Zealand. Okay. Um, let's so I'm trying see. to trying to find out who that is, get them on the phone. And meanwhile, all the food. three of us have left in the SUV. So we're not there. I assume. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's fine. I'm just deciding what kind of check I want you to make. Doing the checks. <laughs> there are a couple that it could be, but this is really about gathering information, right? Um, I mean, so I assume finding out who's in charge of that is mostly just like, hey, I'm a person who wants to talk to whoever's in charge of this, convincing them to have a meeting with me. I would make the argument it's either perception or de deception. Like I either I'm persuasion? deceiving them persuasion. Yeah. Sorry. Perception. Yeah. Now persuasion <laughs> or deception in that I'm persuading them to have a meeting with me or I'm yeah. deceiving them into thinking I'm the ambassador. I think we're going to go for persuasion here. Okay. Uh, we'll make that roll. Oh, no, wait. So D 20 plus seven. Uh, 14. All right. And this was, uh, who were you calling? Uh, well, so I was calling the factory, whoever I can find that is publicly available. So look them up on their website and see like who's in charge of marketing, who's in charge of sales. Um, and I would be calling that person. Okay. I would say, yes, this is, um, so my name is Gloria Dracker. Um, I don't know if you know my father, Stephen Dracker. Um, he's uh, he's ambassador. I, I came down from Canada where um, attending college. He he asked me to look in on your product. I've been in town for a couple of days now and I wanted to see. It seems really interesting. And I think there may be the potential for water to make its way to New Zealand. If, if you think you'd be open for that, I would love to start a conversation that could eventually extend um, to my father eventually and, and maybe strike a deal. Well, uh, I mean, that is wonderful. We're definitely looking to expand. Um, uh, the, the plan is for water to be available worldwide. Uh, we know that there's a desperate need for pure and clean water. Yes, um, definitely. Everywhere in the world. And we're, we're excited to provide it. Um, what are you specifically looking for at the moment? I can take your information down and, and definitely pass it along to the people uh, that would be involved in creating such a contract with uh, another nation. Well, I would, I would love to sit down and, and just chat with you. So I'm, I'm leaving tomorrow. So it's, a, I know I'm sorry, I should have called you earlier, but it's just been a little busy here. Um, and so I, I was hoping if I could just stop by and chat. I don't know if you're um, in town right now. Um, it looks, I pulled, I pulled your info off of your site um, this afternoon to get a little bit more information. I'd love to know as much as possible before I go back uh, to my father and talk a little bit about what I found while I was here. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just the receptionist. I, I think you'd be wanting to talk to Ms. Ang. But um, I don't know. I mean, she is around today. I can check her calendar. Um, you're really only in town today? Yeah, unfortunately. I already got the plane booked and I have a thing I have to do with my dad, you know, coming up. So I can't, I can't really delay it. I'm sorry. I know it's last minute. Okay. I know that Ms. Eng would really want to speak with you. Yeah, um, I appreciate this a lot. I really do. I think it looks like there's like 10 minutes on her calendar oh. around 4.30. Oh, that would be excellent. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry, what was the name that I should uh, put on her calendar? Gloria Dracker. Gloria Dracker. Dracker. That's an interesting name. Is. Where's that from? New Zealand. Uh, what does it mean? Is it like it? It. Sorry, I. I really shouldn't ask these things, but it's such a unique name. I've not heard that one before. Yeah, I don't know that it means anything. 
<sighs> Sorry. I probably should not have pointed that out. Oh, oh. that's so rude of me. Um, okay. I, I, I have you on Ms. Eng's calendar at 4.30. Um, you need to come to the gate and the guard there should be able to let you into the offices um, where I will be here to meet you. Uh, my name is Luna and um, you can uh, just come in to reception and then um, I'll get you in to see Miss Eng as soon as that 4.30 appointment is available. That's excellent. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I look forward to seeing you later. Me too. Thank you. All right. And that is Eng the end fun. of the phone call. <laughs> All right. Um, did you have other calls to make or, uh, do we want to go over to the, nah, you, can to, you can jump, you can jump to them. Cut back and <laughs> forth. Yeah. Mostly I wanted to try to find a way in to do a little bit of inside scouting. Right. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, we planned to drive to like the edge of the forest. Not, it looked like there was a forest near the plant. Correct. Um, yeah, so there is, um, so my wonderful map. I saw a ton of trees. That I did not get a chance to take a picture of. Uh, the motel is down here. Mm -hmm. And there's an industrial park there. Mm -hmm. There's a park in the center of town. Uh, that is shops. Mm -hmm. And on the other side is residential. Uh, and this is like office buildings. And the plant that you're interested in is over here. Mm -hmm. Ah, right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, this is all trees around it, and then there's mountains mm -hmm. behind it. So Jenk's plan is to go and park in, like, go on the road, but then pull off the road and try and hide the SUV in the trees before reaching into the opening where it gets close to the plant. All right. As you are driving through town, um, there are a lot of tourists and youth um, kind of all over town. Um, the streets are really busy, especially for a town as small as this. This town would um, roughly be about like the size of Blacksburg, say. It's only a couple of... Um, like 10,000, 12,000 people normally, um, the population has definitely swelled. Um, with the tourists that have come in, there are a lot of, it is June um, and people are here on like summer vacation. Uh, so yeah, the, there was the big news five months ago with the avalanche that was caused by the supersonic flight overhead that destroyed the uh, ski resort. Um, and so the wreckage of the ski resort has been a big draw. Um, and then more recently, the news about the um, contaminated uh, relief substance food thing. It's kind of like a, a food like survival bar uh, or similar, I would say um, to tofu but it is like a full nutrition tofu that can be used to make all sorts of different things but it's like a hard block that you rehydrate uh, that's what Nutripon is and that is from the Bamberley uh, Trust Corporation plant which is a mile further out of town than the Puritan Foods plant um, and so that the the media attention to Bamberley probably also has drawn people in. Uh, there are also military vehicles on the road. US Army is here in town. Uh, they are wearing weapons as they are walking around. They've got um, military rifles on them. They are always armed and they are um, a little on edge from the number of people that are in town while they're here to do the operation that they're doing. So as you're driving through town, there are pedestrians that are not paying attention to traffic. Uh, they 
are pretty thick and you're having to go pretty slowly through town. Um, there's also the military that is kind of observing everything that's going on. Um, and as you drive out of town, heading towards the plant, um, you can see up ahead, kind of in the vicinity of where the plant is, that the road is blocked off by the army. Uh, so you can get up to the Puritan plant, uh, but you can't go past it. Uh, so we would look for a place before the plant, right? That we would mm -hmm. be able to pull off in the woods, ideally. Yep. Exactly. So there are... Um, there are a couple of like trails off into the woods uh, south of the plant. Um, they don't look very well used. Uh, there are tents set up in kind of the, the field off to the east of the plant. Uh, it looks like a lot of the um, tourists that have come into town are camping out in that field. Um, there are also people like just kind of wandering into the woods as well. It's likely that there are probably some tents set up in the trees as well. Uh, if you want to pull off onto one of those trails, um, you can do so uh, and, and pull into the trees uh, to just get off the road. Yeah. Um, if you're sure. trying to be sneaky about it, then you'll need to do some stealth checks because uh, there are a lot of people around. Is there not a gap in the trees that's not like what a tr like not at a trail but just like a small gap that we could kind of just squeeze the car in just barely off the the road or could we walk like park the car and walk somewhere? yeah that's what i'm thinking is okay. we we want to we want to try and hide the car within the trees and then we can walk i mean there are a number of places where you could just pull off and park and get out and walk like that is not a big deal uh there's um and the parking would be suspicious. but it will be a big deal if we try to launch a drone from there so <laughs> right yeah we would need enough cover to be able to it'll be, we, to it'll be a big deal drone. if we even walk out with the drone so like right we the more we can conceal that our car even exists the better yeah so um the the best options on the forested side would be the trails are the trails wide enough to just drive a car down them? Uh, yeah, there's one or two that are Is it wide illegal? enough for a car. Uh, they've, <laughs> they've got a chain across them that says no trespassing. Well, that doesn't mean us. Yeah, I think uh, uh, we pull up to the trail. You said there's a chain? Yeah, there's a chain across with a mm -hmm. sign hanging from yeah, it Jank, that says no Jank pulls a. Uh, are there like people around, like who are looking at us? Pull up a car. I mean, to this, we're not no trespassing. trespassing. We're customers. <laughs> we can possibly be trespassing. Uh, what color is your SUV? Describe Black. the car to you. Most me. stealthy color. <laughs> <laughs> the ideal. Uh, I heard. I heard black. Camouflage. I would imagine um, black, yeah. I, I, I mean, there something are, where um, it wouldn't look weird. We have there's a lot don't. of stuff going on. There's people everywhere. Um, if you want to try not to be observed or if you just want to like be stealthy, just go ahead and, and make a um, make a stealth check for oh. me. To, to um, stealth check to do what? Uh, to see if you can... But we you seem to want to get in there unobserved. Oh, I want to, yeah, uh, to drive in use my... Uh, well, I want to drive up to this chain thing. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering if me stepping out of the car in front of this chain thing, if just having the car there is sus or not. I mean, it's an SUV pulling up to a ro <laughs> a, a, an unpaved road into the woods and somebody getting out and undoing the chain and there's people while the looking goes through. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was. Okay. So yeah. it's it's not especially suspicious, no. Okay, cool. That's what I was gonna do. I was just gonna undo it. I was gonna take out some uh, chain, some uh, metal cutters from my mechanics kit. 
Okay, and, metal uh, cutters would be suspicious. Well, yeah, is it just, it not just have just, like a hook? It's, it's the last it's bit, right? just a chain oh, across an like, easy chain? Like, <laughs> other people other people do occasionally want to drive down this road and oh. like that there are ways to open it. You don't need the metal cutters. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> then, then yeah. Okay, so we just need to make a stealth check. Uh I mean if you want to. Sure. I don't feel the need to <laughs> unless we have to. What it's do we really do? Low GM? DC. Um, if you want to play this off as just being a normal day and you're concerned about people observing you, go ahead and mm -hmm. just make a stealth check for me. Tell me what you get. Not 20. Oh. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> like, people think that you are you belong there. Like, they don't even notice you. You're just a car that drove up. Somebody got out, undid the chain. The car went through. The chain Probably owns back. that property. Like, yep. you, you must be somebody <laughs> who has business there. Like, this is the owner of that road, and they're more concerned with, are they going to get in trouble from you for having pitched their tent on your property? Just as it should be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you find a place back in the woods where you can pull off the car. There are a couple of tents um, back in the woods there, but they're not necessarily right next to where you are. Um, so you feel pretty confident that you could uh, deploy the the drone from here without too much concern from people. All right. Highcroft, you're on drone. Yep. Pesky B. Let's go. Go. <laughs> I can go so, pretty fast. I'll be a little bit behind. Where you so going? we trek off into the woods towards the the factory. towards right. the factory, trying to give significant distance from the roadblock created by the military. Okay, so you're staying toward the eastern side of the uh, the factory. The west side is basically to, at we the have to end cross of the, the road right to get to the west side uh no, well we so the the roadway goes across the southern side of mm -hmm. the property um and as you're approaching the property ooh, doo -doo. so the road <laughs> is down here mm -hmm. um this way. Mm -hmm. uh, the west side here, this is army encampment, mm -hmm. right up against the fencing for the plant. Um, on this side are scattered tents of just the various tourists, the mm -hmm. youth that are here in the area, and those tents um, continue along a little bit behind on the northern side here. Um, and but we yeah, are aware. That. So the southern side, the trees that you're in are down, down here. at the bottom of the mm -hmm. page. Got you. So the plant um, is like north of us. Yeah. Correct? Yes. What's that? What's that to the west of it? Are those trees? Uh, those those are, are the army tents. Oh, so it's oh. on both sides. The on On this side... No, the other side. youth tents. Okay. On this side is like the tourists and youth, and those and tents are scattered. Okay. On this side is the army, army camp. Tents. And it sounded like you said to the to the south east of this on the road was where the roadblock was. The roadblock is going to be like right here. Oh, like right here where oh. the army. That looks west starts. to me. Are, Wait, is your yeah, camera that is background? West. That is That's west. west, right? Okay. Okay. So then, is there a fence? along the road uh the property is it has a um chain link fence like a 12 foot tall chain link fence around i it. can get over that and yeah, there's well, a <laughs> there's a guard house in the mm -hmm. center of the property here oh, where the fantastic. roadway enters mm -hmm. um there's a, a large gate that rolls across there mm -hmm. um, that could open to let in vehicles there is a, a parking lot here mm -hmm. um the offices, there's a two-story building here with offices, or it looks like an office building. It looks like a house, honestly. Um, 
this is a very large three-story concrete building. Uh, and then over here is a um, like a two-story high concrete building uh, that has a loading dock. Cool. And we we know this how? Uh, by just like walking like. out to the roadway and you can yeah. see oh, it. Oh, and we can see all those <laughs> buildings. I mean, I guess we're, if we're trying to observe it, I would start off over where that main entrance is, walk towards where the youth tents are, walk past the youth tents to kind of look at the building from that end, go up to the north side and then check out the north side, but try to avoid the military tents. Yeah. So, so like what a, are you looking a, for as your, what are you looking for? I mean, there's plenty of people walking around, just uh, what are you wearing as you're doing this? Street cars. Yeah, civilian Padded clothes. Street cars, yeah. Okay. Jeans and... Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I'm still, I'm I'm eccentric. Uh, Jank is wearing her leather trench coat. Cause she's just always wearing her leather trench coat. But like, okay. I wonder how weird that looks in like an almost like semi post apocalyptic, <laughs> especially it's if these are not... teens and youth. Yeah, I feel like it kind of just fits in. Um... So as you're walking along the eastern perimeter of the plant, um, there are uh, like various areas where there are a couple of tents clustered here and a couple of tents clustered there. Um, It's kind of a nonstop party. Uh, There's a lot of alcohol, a lot of um, recreational substances in use. Uh, It's kind of like Burning Man, but in the mountains. And it's right up against the fence. it's not directly up against the fence. Uh, there are a couple of places where it gets pretty close, but there, um, there is a perimeter between where uh, the tents are and the um, partying is between that and like the, the chain link fence of the plant itself. Um, there are uh, security guards that are kind of <clears throat> patrolling the interior of that fence along the Eastern border and then um, as you continue northward uh, to where like the property fence turns and continues along the northern perimeter, um, the tents kind of curve around a little bit and the security guards on the inside continue to patrol around that corner. Um, There is a little pathway about halfway across on the northern side. Um, There's a like a Uh, like a door sized gate in the fence in the center of the back um, where like a person could go through rather than like on the front where a truck could go through the gate. Um, And the, the gate on the back side uh, leads to a little path that just kind of goes off into the mountains uh, like a footpath. Um, And It's not exactly clear what it's there for, um, but there's a path. And the the tents and the revelry don't really extend beyond where that path is in the center of the back. Um, They kind of stop a little bit before it gets there. The patrol kind of only goes that halfway as well. Um, So you're about you've you've turned the corner you're on the northern side there northeast side um do you want to continue and see what the rest of the northern side looks like or over the loud party noise uh jank uh kind of just loud enough for b to hear says a b do you see any gaps in their security so I was looking at the people who were dancing. Uh, I was trying to check out and see if they were drink- drinking anything sp- suspicious uh, to see like what their party is all about. So they just but, look like they're having a good time, and they're not drinking anything suspicious sp- sp- like water. Or... <laughs> the shipment hasn't come out yet. Uh, I, I, I didn't. They're close to the building, so I didn't know if any of them <clears throat> got to it first. So that's why I was no, checking out. No, there. It's mostly like alcohol and drugs and they're just um enjoying their holiday so then i turn my attention to the building and seeing if there's any like open spaces between the buildings any spaces gaps in the fencing so the fence at the seems to be um the fence seems to be intact uh there is chain link fence 
it's chain link, um, kind of all the way around, about 12 foot high. Um, Anything at the top, like barbed wire? Uh, no barbed wire, wire on the top. Lights, what about the lighting? Uh, on the building or the fence? Both. The fence so um, on the building, there are lights um, kind of at the corners. There are a couple of floodlights um, on each of the corners of the large three-story building. Um, there are uh, a couple of lights at the very corners of the fencing. Um, and then there are lights on the office building that you saw, the, the house. Uh, and then in the parking lot, there are you know, like standard parking lot lights. The storage building uh, does not have lights on the back or the west side of it. So that's over by near where the army encampment is. Um, there is an open gap between the like the building that has the loading dock and the large building. Um, it's there are two separate buildings. Uh, and so there's a gap between them. And then there's also a gap between the large concrete building and the, the two-story house. Um, there is a floodlight near the, um, near the gate in the back of the fence. Um, and as you kind of watch over time, um, it has a tendency to flicker out occasionally. Uh, it doesn't seem to have any sort of regular pattern but the light um, does seem to be on the fritz a little bit there. Um, uh, there are also some cameras, uh, security cameras, like one per wall. Uh, so they cover some of the area. There are definitely gaps in the camera coverage. So Jank, it looks like the best way to get in would be through the, through the back, more on the west sides, sneakily. Otherwise, avoid the corners or the the gates. Do you um, wander at all towards the west side? You had said you were trying to stay away from there because the army encampment was there. So I maybe, haven't really maybe but it. further back, like okay. I, I almost feel like we just kind of to this like when we reach the what, when we reach the path. What does it look like uh, looking up the trail? Like up. Um, up the trail, it just goes off into the, the mountains. Like it's a footpath that goes off. There's some trees and uh, it just disappears into the trees on that side. Does it look? But the mountains are pretty close way? on the backside. It's just a footpath. Um, give me anything? a. Um, give me a. Give me a survival check. Uh, okay. Uh, if you both want to, you can. So that's rolling a d20? <laughs> yes. Roll I a rolled, d20 and I rolled add a four. whatever survival modifier you have. I rolled a four. I rolled a 17 plus two is 19. Ooh. Yeah, with a 19, you're pretty sure that this, is, this path is mostly here. Um, for people who are evacuating in case of fire or something like that. It's a it's a path to get them out of the building, off the property, and to a safe distance. Uh, it's There's a fire escape on the back of the building near there, and this gate is most likely just to let people out and off the property in case of fire, chemical contamination, etc. There's a fire escape on the back of which of those buildings? Or just on the back uh, of the The large three-story building, there's a, a fire escape. Um, it is, it takes up most of the back of the building. It is graded. Uh, it is a ramp that goes and, and zigzags back and forth up, but it looks like graded for uh, wheelchair access. For a three-story building? Yeah. Oh, so this is like a huge ramp. It is a big ramp, but it is there and it is... Is it being heavily um, patrolled? No, I mean, other than the, the security guards that are on the ground that are just uh, monitoring the um, the northeast and eastern side of the property, most mostly. Um, 
if you so, watch occasionally one of the guards will go and do the full length of the north side um it doesn't seem like they're patrolling the west side but if you watch long enough the army is patrolling the other side of the fence on the western mm. side and you can see there's a gun emplacement um at like the uh, northwestern corner of the Puritan plant property um, on the out, sorry, on the outside. So uh, army has a gun emplacement there at the edge of their um, encampment. I feel like we should flash over to, to Highcroft right now with the drone. Sure. Cool. Um, so I would try to wait until there was um, kind of fewer folks that seemed to be paying any attention, um, since it seemed like there were folks kind of filtering around in the woods here, um, and then would try to have the drone fairly high to go in over the plant. Um, I'd be taking the same kind of account that the folks on the ground did, where are their cameras, where are their lights, all that sort of thing. But I'm also interested in um, windows. Mm -hmm. um, if the camera coverage is such that I thought I could get a drone close enough to look in a window in the storage facility to see if that is where our target is um, or in the plant. Um, I would try to get close enough to look in windows for each of those. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's see, you have a high definition camera scope on this vehicle. Um, I'm not 100% certain what your stats are for the UAV as far as uh, perception. I'm just going to ask you to roll a d20, um, add four. Why not? Okay. I'll just make it up. <laughs> uh, so that's an 11. All right. Uh, I mean, it's not that difficult to see that um, there don't appear to be windows on either of the large concrete structures. There are plenty of windows in the two-story building out front. Uh, like I said, it looks a lot like a house, mm -hmm. um, but the concrete structures uh, just seem like they have pretty solid concrete walls aside from like the fire escape uh, that's on the back of the three-story building. Um, there are some doors down on the first floor, uh, one in the center of the northern side um, of the building, one in the center of the uh, east side of the building, there are doors that would essentially connect the um, office building and the, the large three-story building. There's a large like bay door um, on the west side of the large three-story building and a corresponding bay door on the smaller concrete building. Um, but yeah, there's not really uh, any windows that you can try and peer through. Um, the smaller two-story concrete building has just a tar roof. There's nothing um, remarkable, remarkable about it. The uh, large three-story building has some uh, like air conditioning style venting on the roof as well as um, <clears throat> like just air handling system stuff. Uh, large industrial air processing units. Um, it is a building that houses people in it regularly and um, therefore it has an air handling system capable of filtering out all of the pollutants that are common in the air today. Um, uh, no, no buildings pretty much today are without systems like that. Um, and the environmental um, irritants and pollutants are probably one of the reasons why it also doesn't have windows because those are uh, vectors for that stuff to get in. That makes sense. Um, in the time that I'm looking uh, around those buildings, does it seem like coming up on top of the buildings is part of anyone's kind of route? Any of these guards that are patrolling, do they actually no. come up on top of any of the buildings? 
No, their patrols are um, only on the ground. Okay. Um, I would want to look for a place to hide this drone. Uh, what do you mean by hide? So a place, if I can get it like near some of these air handling ducts so that I don't have to get it back into this area later on when we come okay. back. Yeah, there are plenty of places on the roof. It's a very large building. So um, you could land it somewhere on the roof without any issue. They don't see it flying over the roof? Um, how <laughs> loud are these drones? Uh, they're not super quiet. They're pretty audible. Unless this is a spy drone. Um, I can use my stealthy deployment. What does that helpful. do? Right. What that, does it do? Um, I can use a bonus action to uh, disguise the sound when I'm deploying um, a uh, whatever this thing is called. Uh, gadget. UAB. Yeah. Gadget. Yeah. A gadget is, I think, is the term that they use in the book. But you have I don't know if this counts as that. So I don't think that that would work because you've already deployed it and you're trying to land it. Um, yeah. That would have worked at takeoff if like trying to disguise it there. I don't, cause you're not near it. So I don't feel like that would apply. Um, you could use your radio to contact uh, Jank or Pesky B and see if they wanted to um, create a distraction, create a distraction or just even see if they're able to perceive the sound mm -hmm. from it. Yeah, uh, it's pretty small. Checking. People aren't really looking for it, um, no. unless you're flying over on the western side where the army might be paying attention. Um, yeah, yeah, I would give them a call, see if they're perceiving sounds from this drone. Um, does this require a perception check? Yep. Okay, so uh, I look up towards the uh, plant and I roll a mm, four again. <laughs> so uh, no, there's no way. SDB, what, did, what did you get for perception? So roll a d20 and add your perception modifier. 16 perception modifier. Mm -hmm. yeah. Plus two is 18. So 18, um, 18, I had, you definitely passed the check um, and you don't really notice it. There is a lot of noise coming from the, um, the revelry at the campsite. Um, so yeah, at least Excellent. on that Eastern side of the building, uh, that noise just mixes in with the rest of it. What y'all doing out there? Comes over the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about us. Just hiding a drone for later. Hiding a drone for later? Well, like a snack? Uh, no, there's a party out here. And also a drone for later. Okay. Well, um, are y'all still going to make it back after two hours? I hope uh, so. <laughs> do we need to be back in two hours? Do no, you if there? you come back in two and a half hours, I won't be here. Mm. Do you want to meet us here? Yeah, no, are you coming here? I, I definitely don't want to meet you there. That would blow my cover. But we can watch. Like, I mean, we don't have to blow your cover. We can. Just oh well, yeah, I mean, y'all can watch me. Yeah, I guess from a distance, and don't talk to me. How long will it take Ooh. for? Uh, how long will it take to walk from the? from the motel all the way <laughs> it's it's a good four or five miles at least so i mean that will take a couple of hours i mean can i get a taxi That's... yeah you can you can get a taxi <laughs> okay <laughs> and... it is a functional modern town oh yeah that's what um, i thought <laughs> you you can get an uber, uber or yeah, a like... lyft or something like that yeah yeah. If do you tell us mm -hmm. that you have an appointment? Yeah, or, I have an appointment. You, okay. I mean, I am willing to go in with you as your 
Oh, LA you were not part of the assistant. cover story. Sorry. <laughs> if you wanted okay. to be part of the cover story, you should have told me earlier. <laughs> okay. uh, I mean, Jenks just planning on still like st standing outside, basically at the ready if something's needed um, while you're inside of the facility. And okay, well, I was just I was just chiming in because y'all were coming out over the radio and, and it seemed confusing. So you're asking about whether or not you hear this thing, which doesn't seems like you should know that answer. <laughs> all right. So you, you land the um, you land the drone. Uh, you all have kind of scouted the area. You've got the overhead shots. You've got um, a pretty good idea of how things are. There was another gun emplacement at the uh, southern end of the army encampment. The army encampment goes right up to the fencing on the west side. Um, and from the UAV, you would have been able to tell the army encampment basic, basically covers the entire mile of ground between the Puritan plant and the Bamberley Trust Corporation plant. Um, and they've got four laser tanks on site, but those laser tanks are on the western side near the Bamberley plant. Um, and Wait, why do you they would have know, tanks? You, um, you would I mean, know I guess from we... the media broadcasts, just regular media broadcasts, that um, the army is there to destroy the contaminated Neutropon. Um, they were a unit that was scheduled to be overseas uh, in Africa, fighting in the ongoing conflict there. They were rerouted here. Uh, for this spectacle of destroying the Neutropon. And this is um, three or 4,000 soldiers and four tanks that are here on site. Uh, they're supposed to have UN observers with them. Um, that's what? kind of what you would know from the news. Do we know what time they're supposed to be destroying it? It's supposed to be tomorrow morning. 8 a.m.? Uh, no, a little bit later, probably more like 10. Cool, cool. And we don't necessarily care about the Neutropon, right? Uh, the Neutropon is supposedly contaminated with the same kind of contaminant that was detected in the water. Um, the Neutropon contamination has been worldwide news. The water contamination was successfully covered up uh, and only affected a small, small town in Ontario. Um, you were sent to deal with the water before it ends up in New York City. Uh, it was um, specifically the contamination was, I have it here, um, an ergo alkaloid compound. Uh, it leads to a, a syndrome called ergotism, um, otherwise known as St. Anthony's fire. Basically, um, it'd be like tripping on shrooms. It, it causes psychosis and violent behavior. Mm. So is uh, just to be clear about our mission, is our mission to destroy or would exposing it be good enough? Uh, they didn't specify anything about exposing it. Okay. Um, the mission was to, to stop production of it and prevent the shipment. Okay. Which we could do by destroying it. <laughs> yeah. Just blow up the whole factory. So. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there we go. All right. So in so, the meantime, while they're uh, looking around, um, Clara is getting her hair darkened to black because Gloria's hair is black and is putting on her formal clothes that she wears when she is in Gloria's form. She is going to wear, she's not going to take her gun or her vest or pretty much any of her normal spy implements except for her exploding necklace, which she wears and looks like it's a part of this outfit. Um, and uh, will take with her her smartphone that is part of this cover identity. And um, she also has a diplomatic passport that she'll take with her. Okay. 
so one second. Um, <clears throat> Um, let's go ahead and jump to you arriving at the Puritan plant. Okay. So, um, she gets out of her Uber. <laughs> the person, I guess, if y'all stayed to watch, which you can let me know, um, instead of coming back to the, the hotel, the person you see get out does not look like the person you ran into in the hotel. Uh, the woman you ran into the hotel, Clara, has like light brown hair, um, was wearing sort of normal street clothes. This person has got on like a little uh, business suit and um, has jet black hair um, and is wearing a nice pair of like cut like low glasses um, and has come in um, like sort of on her cell phone and walks up to the guards and goes, uh, hello. And she takes out her, her diplomatic ID and says, um, my name's Gloria Dracker. I'm here to meet with Luna. I was, we were here to talk about a, a possible business deal. All right, so you're at the, um, the front gate, the guard shack there. Mm -hmm. um, there's a person, the guard on duty is about early forties in a guard uniform. They seem kind of bored. They've got on the television in, in the shack. Um, and so they, they look cursorily at your ID. Looks like you. They lean over and buzz the door. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to use this moment to start establishing my theme, uh, which is the ability the face gets in which their presence in a secure location does not seem odd. And I've specifically shown him my ID uh, for reasons that we will we'll talk about later. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I had No, I him. get it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I know uh, your character wouldn't know, but they are they, not a he. Oh, okay. They, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, head on inside. Uh, and th is there any semblance of like where I'm supposed to go? Um, yeah, there's like a little sidewalk that heads over to the two-story little house. Okay. I head into the two-story little house and uh, just look for whoever the first person is who yeah. seems to be you, on watch or something. You enter the first, or you enter the door and um, there's a short red-headed woman sitting at a little counter inside mm -hmm. Um it's a standard like reception area, waiting room. There's some chairs, um, a little like counter for the receptionist to sit at. There's a little water cooler um, off in the corner, uh, some magazines on some tables in front. Um, yeah, pretty standard like office reception area. Mm -hmm. So she, she walks up to the, the red haired woman and um, shows the ID again. Uh, and says, I'm, I'm here to meet with Luna. Uh, my name's Gloria Tracker. Oh, oh, yeah, this is Luna. I, I am Luna. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's nice uh, to meet you. Yeah, um, so, so sorry about focusing so much on your name. Oh, it's, oh my it's, God, it's, it's so it's, embarrassing. It's okay. um, well, it, it is, you're, you're like five minutes early and there's no way that I can get you in before 4.30. Uh, do you mind waiting? Yeah, well, do you do, uh, do you do like tours? I'd love to see the facility. Um, we don't really do tours of the, the grounds, no. I mean, the best I could do would be to like walk you around the reception area. Oh, uh, was there anything interesting to see around the reception area? What do you uh, recommend? There's a water cooler over Does there. It have, it's is it's it water? Got water? New, yeah, um, it's our new product. Uh, it's water, pure and clean. Um, it's uh, it's a big deal. I mean, that's what you're here to talk about, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh yeah, we have our first shipment going out uh, tomorrow. Actually, it's going to New York City. Ooh. Um, it's like the big official launch. Oh, that sounds exciting. I'm going to go, yeah. I'm going to go try some and, and we just let me know. I'll, I guess I'll take a seat whenever. Uh, and who did you say I'm here to speak with? I'm sorry. I'm terrible with names. My dad oh, yeah. always tells me if you're going to, if you're going to follow my footsteps, you got to learn to be better with names. And I'm, 
I'm a- so I set you up with um, kind of like the the highest ranking person here today, which is our director of marketing. Her name is Joy Eng. Joy Eng. Right. Yes. She. Joy Eng. Joy Eng. And you see her. It's like, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well. Well. Thank you. I'm looking forward. It's to okay. This. You'll be. You'll be fine. Don't worry. Like, um, she's director of marketing. She understands when people just don't remember names. That's 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 very reassuring. Thank you so much. And she she walks over to the water cooler and, and she pours herself some and she fakes like drinking it because uh, mm-hmm. she knows this is contaminated. <laughs> uh, and so she's like, she just gives it like a nod. She's like, oh, wow. And she she like looks over and she like makes this sort of a gesture like this is really good and takes another fake drink uh, I mean, and, and I... takes a seat. I definitely hope that it's good. I haven't actually had any yet. I've just been drinking coffee all day. Oh, well, I, I, I'd love they to They did give some me coffee. some to take home though. Yeah. So I, you know, I'll use it for my baby. Um, it's always important to make sure that the babies have like the most clean water possible. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. And, and in her head, she's like, well, mental note, try to stop that from <laughs> happening later. <laughs> Uh, all right. All right. Yeah. Um, can the can the other teammates hear this going on through the comm, or did you take out your earpiece? I would have I would have taken out the comm piece to be honest, because she is. This is her. No suspicion whatsoever. Like infiltration. She didn't know she's gonna get patted down. Like <laughs> she's done this before, and she knows you don't go in the first time with guns and earpieces and all that sort of stuff. You always save that for once people don't care about you anymore. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, anything you want to do in like the five minutes that you have to uh, wait? Making a mental like map of this. What I've seen so far of the place and like looking around like at security on the inside um anything along those lines that is visible or would be worth tracking honestly it seems a lot lower security than you would kind of expect it's just like a uh, it's a small office building uh attached to a manufacturing plant it's not not like super high security or anything like that um Okay. Yeah. She's just casing the place, trying to figure out what sort of things we might have to deal with once everybody's on the inside. Yeah. Uh, so about five minutes pass while you're kind of covertly observing things. And then um, you hear Luna and she's like, um, um, Miss Dracker, uh, mm-hmm. I think... Um, Miss Eng is free for you now. You can go go on back. It's just through this door over here and then down the hall on your right. Okay. And she's like, thank you so much. And she heads down there, goes down uh, on the right uh, as, as sort of instructed, looking in a similar fashion to see if there's anything obvious that's worth noting. Yeah, it's, in terms it's of security, pretty but... drab office walls, some like slightly patterned off-white wallpaper along the hallway, um doors that have little like nameplates next to them uh and you get down and like the at the end of the hall on the right hand side there's a a door with a um nameplate next to it that says joy ang uh director of marketing so pop inside i'm like hello i'm gloria dracker Oh yes, yes. Come inside. Um, and uh, she, she shows her her diplomatic ID, um, like sort of nervously, like shows it to her. Um, and it was New Zealand. Yep. Was that it? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, a kiwi. Um, how exotic. We don't get very many kiwis here in Colorado. No, um, probably not. Uh, so I, yeah, I thank you so much. I know it was short notice, but I, I really just wanted to talk to you briefly about your facilities. So my my father asked me, you know, we've been talking recently, and he's he's really interested in getting more water in New Zealand, more there's clean water, um, and so he's had to sort of keep an eye out. And I was in town for the you know the festivities and stuff, and I, I mentioned that to him, and he said, well, why don't you stop by and and see? He'd heard about your uh, sort of grand opening or, or launch of your product in New York coming up tomorrow. And it was like, you know, see what, drop in and see what they're all about. Um, so I, I think what he, 
you know, I'm, I'm not my father. I can't just do business on his behalf, but I, I know some of the questions he had and, and they were sort of concerning, you know, what is your, um, your output pro like, what are you capable of? Um, and what is your sort of manufacturing timelines? And I, you know, if, if so, like, I don't know if you do tours or anything along those lines, but I would, I would, I would love to see, cause I mean, honestly, we wouldn't mind opening a plant like this in New Zealand, if possible. Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm in charge of marketing, so I'm not, uh, not necessarily familiar with all of the logistics of being able to actually create another plant like this. I do know that it would require us to find a source of uncontaminated natural water. Mm -hmm. um, that is one of the uh, main points that we were seeking. Like our customers at Puritan want um, natural products. They don't want things that have been processed through many chemical processes. That's why when you uh, buy our apples at the store, they have wormholes in them. That's mm -hmm. why our carrots have the dirt still on them when right, you go to the grocery store. And um, yes, our products may cost a little bit more, but they are more nutritious for being completely natural. Mm -hmm. So our water also has to come from a large natural source that won't, uh, that doesn't require a lot of processing and yes. a lot of chemicals to make it drinkable. We do, um, you know, some standard processing to remove odor and, uh, and flavor from the natural water, but we do as little processing as we possibly can. Um, so in order to create a plant First, we would have to identify a source um, and then we'd have to obtain the property and build the facility. Our facility here sits on top of a vast natural aquifer um, and uh, we pump the water directly in, uh, do the minimal processing and bottle it here on site. Um, we're able to turn out a, a few hundred thousand units a day. Uh, and as you said, we, we have our first um, regional launch in New York City. Uh, it should be available in stores by next week. Oh, excellent. Um, so you say a few hundred thousand products a day? Is that what yeah, you're trying to do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we're able to do a few hundred thousand pallets. Oh. Uh, and she's you in, see her sort of day. like doing math in her head and stuff. And she says, so, so would it be so probably shouldn't tell you this, but um, we may know of some natural water sources. Um, we've sort of been discovered. They're on land that we can obtain. Um, construction might be a little difficult um, given some of the things that are around them and locations. Um, so yeah, that's, that's part of that's part of our big challenge. We, we're really looking for someone who can take on the challenge of this particular difficult site. Um, so, you know, that's sort of, is there, is there someone I could talk to who does know those logistical challenges? Or, or I think, um, you know, even size constraints, like if there were places that um, it could be compacted down maybe, because I, I, you know, just looking at your facility from outside, it seems quite big for the locations that we have available to us. And so if there, I don't know that we would need the same output that you have. And so if there are things that we could do to maybe compact so what some are you, of the- what are you trying to get with the- uh... I'm trying to get her to like just take me on like a quick whirlwind tour of like where the water's actually bottled. Okay. Um, go ahead and I'm going to make you roll for that. Yeah. Persuasion? I think so. Yeah. Okay. 16. Yeah. 16 should, should be enough. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Ms. Eng um, basically tells you, um, I'm not really privy to all of the logistics of, of things. You would really need to schedule some time to speak with Advik, um, Advik Sridhar. He's our, um, our main like engineer with regard to things. Um, 
So you would definitely want to talk to Advik. Uh, I could show you kind of what our operation looks like. We're a fairly small operation here. Um, uh, I don't know how how it would do on a smaller scale. Um, I had honestly thought when when the appointment was booked that you wanted to to discuss distribution and marketing of a product in in New Zealand. Well, yeah, um, I mean, I think I think that's step one. Is is we get some of your product. Um, I mean, building a factory takes time. There's dad always says, you know, you can't start a, you can't, can't get a deal made and start a business overnight. Um, so, I mean, really we've got to fill that gap before then. And then of well, course, I think this would be a very fruitful partnership. Um, so in that we don't, we I, can't run the business. That's not, that's not the government's well, role. I mean, you're, even down in New Zealand, you have to be familiar with Puritan Foods. We are oh, yeah, the course, number one course. distributor of all natural foods in the United States. And yes, we do expand a little bit beyond that. Um, so we would not be looking to hand over our uh, market share to any other company. We, oh, we are so. perfectly capable of managing worldwide operations on our own. Yes. Um, you could potentially become a subsidiary. Yeah, well, so... You know, my father is the ambas ambassador. He works for the government. The government doesn't intend to to run a business. That's not the government's no good at that. Um, what we are wanting is to find someone to make a partnership with on this land. Someone we can sell it to who will use it well um, and and be able to provide the resources that are there to the people of New Zealand in the form of clean, pure water. We could potentially do that for you. That um, sounds the, great. So I will have Luna set you up with an appointment to speak with Advik. Uh, but what I can do now is I can I could take you and and show you just a brief look inside. Okay, that um, would that would be wonderful, and and I would really appreciate the follow up meeting. That would be great. Absolutely. Uh, and so she ushers you out of her office and walks you around toward the back of the building, just through basic office hallways, past other offices. Um, and there's a door kind of in the center of the back of the little two-story house, um, opens out and directly across from it is uh, the employee entrance of the main manufacturing building, which is the tall three-story uh, concrete building. So I'm going to interrupt you because I want to tell you what I'm doing while this is happening. So in yeah. addition to keeping an eye out, I have my diplomatic passport mm -hmm. sort of tucked away. Uh, the moment I find a machine or a, a something large and, and industrial, um, I'm going to purposely hide it away underneath of that machine. Like I dropped it. Like that's the look that I've mm -hmm. sort of, I've misplaced it, but I want it to fall in such a way that it would, you wouldn't notice it. Like you wouldn't just find it. Okay. Um, so as you enter the main manufacturing facility, uh, you go inside uh, through the employee entrance and um, the first room is not very glamorous. <laughs> it is, uh, I have a thing to help me remember. Um, the, yeah, the first room that you enter is basically an employee break room. Uh, there are lockers and some tables. Um, and through that, there you go through another door and it opens up onto a large expansive space. Um, in that space is the all of the bottling machinery. Um, I have a description that I will read to you. Um, so there's a walled bay in the Northwest where boxes of finished product are kind of stacked. It's got like a partial wall um, separating it from the main uh, production area and it's kind of a staging area before things would move out into the storage and distribution facility next door. Um, there's a loading zone in front of that that's kind of marked off to be able to allow forklifts and things to come in and out. Um, 
in the southwest of the building, there is a walled area that is kind of uh, from the southwest corner and off to like the middle of the southern wall is all kind of walled in. The far southwest area and along there is like manufacturing supplies and things like that, like the raw stock for the plastic bottles, mm-hmm. um, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, and uh, so like during all of this, she's like saying things like, oh, well, we could probably store the, the raw materials for the bottles off site. And I, and I don't even know that we would need this many canisters of, of the water really for, because I mean, New Zealand's so much smaller than the United mm-hmm. States. We have much smaller population. Um, and she's also asking questions. She's like, does your logistical network include airplanes? Would you, would you need to add some sort of means for international transport or do you already have that capability? Um, and just, just like keeping those questions yeah. going so that, so that uh, Joy is constantly sort of dealing with the logistics of like answering these questions. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and Go ahead and give me a deception check. Okay. Just to maintain that for the entire thing. 24. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have any problem. Um, uh, Joy is not really used to touring the um, facility for people, but she is the director of marketing. She's the only one there. The facility is actually shut down today and she does let you know that it's not in operation today because of all of the disruption happening next door with the army and all of the problems that are over at the um, the Bamberley Trust uh, plant next door. Mm-hmm. Uh, and basically uh, just because of all of the the craziness happening in or the, the disruption happening in town, um, they just needed to shut down the plant for today, uh, but they are still scheduled to send out their shipment in the morning. Um, so there's the supply area in the Southwest. There's that employee entrance area that's basically dead center South between them is the bathrooms. Um, there's on the Eastern side of the building is the bottling, the main bottling machinery. Um, uh, do, do So the entire east wall has the main bottling apparatus. The southeast includes tanks where activated carbon is introduced to clear the water and remove its smell. Uh, And then it passes through various sets of filters uh, to remove mud and other impurities. Um, In the northeastern part are the sections that expand the plastics discs into plastic bottles, uh, piping that injects the water into the bottles and cap and the machines that cap them off. Um, they then go from there along the northern wall uh, from northeast over to about north central. Um, and that's where they get uh, sorted into um, like 24 and wrapped in plastic to be moved over into the staging area to then go into the shipping area, etc. cetera. Um, in the center, oh, and sorry, in the far upper northwest, north, west, north east corner of the building, um, there's a set of labs where they do testing on the water to check for uh, any bacterial contamination, um, to make sure that it's, uh, like they've managed to remove silt and that it tastes and smells the way it's supposed to, etc. Um, in the center of the area, there's kind of like a <clears throat> wrought iron fence around a large pump that sticks up out of the floor and extends all the way up to the third story before pipes come off of it and feed into the machines. Um, And there is a hatch in the floor there inside the, the like fenced off area. Is there, Um, do I find a place to, to drop my passport? Yeah. So you can drop it basically anywhere along that Eastern or Northeastern portion. I mean, there's all sorts of, large metal machinery um, in that area that's designed for taking the water in, processing it, putting it in bottles, et cetera. So anywhere along there um, would be a good spot. There, um, it is three stories tall. There is on the second floor. uh, So next to where the employee lounge area is, there's a ramp that goes up to kind of a perimeter walkway that covers um, 
from the southwest side all the way around to the northwest side. Um, so the only part that really isn't covered over is like the staging area for the product and the loading zone. The rest of it has a perimeter walkway that goes around. Um, there's a ramp that heads up uh, next to the um, employee lounge area up onto that second floor area. And it seems like that lower left area that was all walled off and had like the bathrooms and stuff has a second floor to mm -hmm. it of rooms up there. Um, Joy just mentions that uh, up there is kind of the center of where like security is stationed is on that second floor. The rest of it seems to just be walkway to go around um, the and be able to access the upper parts of the machinery. Um, and then on the far east side, there is another ramp that goes up to a third floor catwalk area um, that provides access to the highest parts of the machinery. Okay. But that uh, third floor part is only along that north and east side where the machinery is. And does she show me where the, the like trucks are loaded up for the shipment tomorrow? Yeah. So sh if you ask, she would walk you over um, to the two-story concrete building, which is next door. Mm -hmm. um, and that is uh, the sh main shipping area. Um, I, I draw the maps for myself, so I remember things. Um, Very helpful. <clears throat> in the main shipping area, it's kind of like the opposite of the manufacturing floor. There's a loading zone area, but instead of you've got a big bay door with loading zone. And then there's kind of like a central area in the middle that's also like cordoned off so that people don't stack things there. Um, the southeast part of that building has a couple of forklifts parked in it. All along that entire uh, western wall is just stacked floor to ceiling. Two stories high, floor to ceiling, uh, a couple of pallets deep of water. And has staged the... and ready to be loaded onto a truck in the morning. Okay. And has the security seemed very similar to what I've seen so far? Yeah. Uh, basically, doesn't seem to be extensive security. Um, they've got cameras. They've got uh, just basic stuff. Um, this is a syndicate company. And you do know that the syndicate um, has their own spy network. Mm. And with things being unsettled in town, it's entirely possible they have agents on site uh, or in town. Um, but yeah, uh, security here at the plant seems like standard, like manufacturing plant security. It's not especially tight. Okay. Yeah. I mean, after she'd shown that and I sort of got a look at the place, um, I would, I would thank her so much. I'd be like, I have so many things to tell my father related to this. I appreciate, I know it was last minute. I really do appreciate it. I have, and, and I, I, I would like to follow up um, with, uh, what, what did you say his name was? I'm terrible about names, I'm sorry. Oh, oh yes, uh, of course. Um, I have to get back there. Uh, uh, Advik Sridhar, he yeah, is would... um, the head engineer. Um, he basically designed all of the, the um, access into the aquifer and how that connects into our machinery. Um, he would be able to talk about like those technical logistical aspects of things. Oh, excellent. Um, yeah. I would love to put him in contact with, with one of our engineers. Absolutely. Um, I I'll go ahead and let's go back and we'll get you on his schedule. Uh, Luna can get you set right up. It was okay. so nice to meet you today. Great and you. Um, you know, if you're in New York in the next week or so, make sure you pick up some water and um, tell all your friends about it. Definitely. So I, I'm going back home for, you know, for an ambassador thing, uh, but we're heading back to the States soon. Hopefully y'all won't be sold out. Right. Oh, I don't think there'll be any chance of that. We have plenty of water okay. to go around. Well, that's good to know. Uh, uh, so she takes you back to reception. Luna gets you set up with an appointment for, you know, whenever yeah, you I give her my burner phone to number. do it. Um, and you head on out. And uh, so um, that's putting us to kind of right around like, 5 p.m. probably might be a little bit after. Mm -hmm. 
I think uh, we do want to go ahead and go on a break for about 10 minutes. And then when we come back, um, what, how, what time do you all want to try executing your mission? In sunset. I was going to say like 1 a.m. I was about to say 2 a.m. Yeah, at least two, if not three. So we will come back. It will be dark out. It'll be middle of the night-ish. So we'll go with like the 1 a.m. and we'll pick it up there. Sounds good. So we'll see y'all in uh, 10 minutes or so. All right. The University of Libraries at Virginia Tech, we have been checking out equipment for some time now and we're always trying to think of what's something else we can check out that students would be interested in that maybe they just don't have access to. We've always felt like our job at the university is to help students get the education they need for jobs that maybe don't exist yet. And so what's next? And so drones is just a huge part of that. So we just thought, how can we get drones out there? And the best way to do it was to partner with the drone park. The partnership between the drone park and the library, we did our homework and we looked at the regulatory environment and we looked at what the FAA will allow for that. And so we're like, we're good at lending. And they're like, and we have the place where you can fly it. And so it just kind of, it just kind of worked, just kind of fit. Someone just had to put it together. We just realized what a fantastic opportunity this is, not only for individuals in the university, but just for the university as a whole. If you just look at it economically, we have over 30 different organizations and labs that use unmanned aircraft here on campus. If every one of those labs had to go out and buy some of these aircraft, tremendous cost to the university. We have over six different types of drones that, we're, um, that we can fly. I've been able to see history kind of being made. It's law changing and I think it's the center, it's kind of the intersection of innovation. It is a game changer. Um, completely changes the way that students and faculty and staff can go about their projects. The drones are not at the Media Design Studio, the drones are here at the drone park. The way you can see what they have and the way you check them out is you actually go to the Media Design Studio's website and use Connect To and check it out and then it says on there, go get it at the drone park. We're making history here, and it's really amazing to be a part of that. My name is Alice Rogers. I am manager of the Media Design Studios here at University Libraries. Uh, the Media Design Studios provide access to a number of resources patrons might not otherwise have, such as the Adobe Creative Suite, cameras, VR headsets, and just all kinds of different things that you might want to create media with. My job is to make sure these spaces work well, they work smoothly, and people can have access to them, as well as teaching a lot. I teach our student workers how to work with patrons and how to use the software. I also teach workshops open to anybody in the community, as well as classes at Virginia Tech. I'll give select sessions on different types of software and hardware available in the studio. When I'm not working, I play a lot of music. My undergraduate degree, I majored in saxophone and electronic performance, and so I have a wind controller that I play sometimes, and I also play banjo in a local band. And it really pairs nicely with my job because you you can record all sorts of music, particularly in Media Design Studio B. We have a sound booth, we have a lot of microphones. You can really get a good sound there. The University Libraries at Virginia Tech manage information for the entire university in support of research and instruction. So a, a successful 21st century library needs to be able to manage all kinds of content, not just books and journals. So we've been trying to build up our 3D imaging operations for the last two years or so. The next steps are to have a better sense of what the educational outcomes are in working with 3D images. Digital imaging is vital for the university libraries. It provides a way for the public to access all of these collections of interesting materials and insects and documents that wouldn't otherwise be available. And making them accessible to the general public is a really big part of our mission here. We are currently scanning a small collection for the entomology department and we hope to continue going through their collection. 
So there's lots of things about how the insects are shaped that you're able to see in much greater detail through these 3D models than you would by looking at a specimen in a pin in a box. And we are completely open to gathering all of the objects that are hidden away in text collections and finding ways to make them accessible to the public. Looking forward, we're hoping to expand the collections and expand access to the collections, but also expand outreach. So we want to work with Hokie Bug Fest and Virginia Tech Science Festival this fall, and also work with area public schools and, and making sure that these get into the classroom and, and then also be able to see, you know, what do teachers get out of it? What do students get out of it? My name is Vince Haley. I'm an associate professor in industrial design here in the School of Architecture plus Design. So in, in industrial design, we often um, will start off doing sketches of ideas to solve some problems, and then we very quickly move into physical models. Well, the goal of that item is that it'll be manufactured at some point in time. So eventually it has to get into the digital world. And one opportunity is 3D scanning. So in the art and architecture library, we have available two sense scanners, which work off of photogrammetry as the, the method for capturing the image. As far as the, the technology that we have available, one thing that I appreciated as a faculty is in trying to plan out how I might implement technology in my courses was the ability to, to check out the scanner and then be able to have some extended time to work with it and, and hopefully develop some curriculum. And that same option or opportunity is there for our students as they're working on uh, their projects and knowing that they have available the equipment that they need, um, that's very, very helpful. We had like a little jump All right. in. We're back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm just going to wait and confirm that the stream sees us. Uh, the confidence monitor is showing us on there. We'll see what the, the, the chat says. OK. Um, yeah, we are back. So uh, it is 1 AM. So I would have told We're... everybody everything I saw, the entire layout, basically all the intel I gathered. And I would also tell them all the stuff that she told me while I was there um, in okay. as much detail as possible. I would also tell them, regardless of what they're doing, I I am going back the way I I got in the first time. I have a plan uh, for getting back in. I I don't think a multi-pronged attack is a bad idea. Um, I can definitely be a distraction while y'all enter in whatever way y'all see fit. Um, so where are you all uh, meeting up to launch your mission from? So I'm, I'm taking an Uber from the house or from the, the motel um, okay. because I, it needs same. to look exactly the yeah, same. the same way. And well, are y'all, are y'all taking the Uber with me? You can't take the Uber no, with me. I, no, I've said <laughs> this, it needs to be the same way as it was the first time. I didn't so sign up sense. for ride sharing when I booked this Uber. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Um, so the rest of you are approaching on the SUV um, and you would get there. The Honestly, the partying is continuing. There's a lot of um, fire. Like I said, it's basically Burning Man, but it's in the mountains. <laughs> so, so there's a lot of cover for just people walking around. Yes, the area is pretty active. The army um, seems to be on alert and just paying attention, making sure that people, uh, if people wander over to where they are, they're kind of um, rebuffing them, turning them away. Um, they don't want people heading over towards the Bamberley property because that's their area of interest. Um, so it's really not a whole lot different from when you were here earlier in the day, other than it's dark. Excellent. Okay. Before... <laughs> it's dark. Excellent. <laughs> Perfect. Um, before we go back, I would want to chat about how we're going to destroy this shipment they gave us c4 it, okay if that's the because if we want to destroy the shipment and the facility then 
So I tell y'all, someone needs to go in that manhole cover that's near the pump because who knows what's down there. Maybe I could definitely fit down there. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody, not me, uh, mm -hmm. should go down there. <laughs> See what's going on. Sure. But I mean, we definitely need to destroy the floor to ceiling stacks of this stuff that they have. Right. Yeah, definitely need to do that. Dump it out one by one. Yep. <laughs> Just take all night. Each one. Just take out guns and just start shooting holes in all of the bottles. Perfect. This is what this is what sanitation hired us for. <laughs> <laughs> all uh, right. We do also have that so, micro grenade. So. Yeah. You know, what's the difference between a micro grenade and a regular grenade? Um, smaller, I assume. <laughs> yeah, it's little. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I was, it's, it's in here in the standard equipment somewhere. I asked that um, fully aware it might be a dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a new system for everybody, not just Yes. Us, so. Yes. This system is uh, brand new. Uh, I think two weeks, maybe, that it's been, been out. Um, Oh, also micro follow. grenades, not standard equipment in Dungeons and Dragons. So not one that I'm terribly familiar with. Yeah, it's called Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I have to find it. So I do when I go back, I do have all my spy equipment, but I'm still dressed in the same clothes and have the necklace and everything um, this time around. So I have my gun concealed uh, and um, my vest is on under my clothes, um, which is an undercover vest. So I can do that. Um, and uh, all the other little knickknacks that I got from sanitation, handcuffs, mm -hmm. <laughs> stuff like that. I have a flashbang. <laughs> yeah, prepared. That's good. Um, it's time to be spies, everybody. Yeah, yep. I'm ready. It's time, time to infiltrate and um, take care of what you were here for. All right. So when I show up at the front guard gate again, crying, uh, panicked, go up to the guard and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I've lost my, my diplomatic passport. I just got off the phone with my dad. He's super mad at me. I think I dropped it when I was here earlier. I've been calling and calling and trying to get a hold of somebody and nobody's picking up the phone. And I, I have a plane to catch in the morning. They won't even let me on my plane. And if I miss this, gala again dad is gonna he's gonna kill me is there any way i can just run in and grab it i think i know where i dropped it remind me how old you are uh she's 22 um so it is the same guard mm -hmm. from this afternoon they have been on shift a long time mm -hmm. um They've they've slid open the window and you've you've just been um, bawling at them and they look at you and they're just like, of course nobody's answering the phone. It's one o'clock in the morning. No, I know. I'm sorry to bother you. I know it's late, but my plane leaves at seven a.m. in the morning. Where did you go? Where do you think it is? She took me for a tour. I think I, I think I dropped it near where the the big, the big tanks are. And um, so you see on their name tag, they've got a little. It says Leffler S. Leffler. Um, Leffler reaches over and like pushes a button next to a little microphone and um, says, Harris, Lewis, can you get inside and check near the equipment? This person out here thinks they might have lost a passport. Yeah, Take yeah. a sweep through the facility, see if you see something. Just thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, they'll take a look for you. 
she's just like nervously pacing back and forth and y'all can jump to them <laughs> yep <laughs> what are you all doing well i think if our top priority is destroying this um shipment than trying to infiltrate the shipping, transportation, whatever, building um, should be maybe top priority. Is that um, the big it, warehouse with three stories? The big yeah. Okay. Oh, we would have had a chance. The two story one? Sorry. We would have had a chance to speak with Crowfoot before right. uh, going in. Yeah. So we would know the different things, which would mean that we would know that the. Uh, there was a specific line that was said that the um, they have much more where this shipment came from. Like they're not lacking in water in any way. It's easy for them to continue production. Um, does that mean that we should be trying to also sabotage production? Yep, we decided we're going to blow yes. it up. Let's see for. And someone needs to go someone down in the hatch and Pesky B me. has volunteered because Crowfoot is not interested in the hatch. So how, how are the three of you inserting? Where are you staged uh, as um, Crowfoot approaches the front gate? I think I was going to go up to the northwest where there's less, less lighting and just jump the fence and go over to the side of the building where the warehouse is. What is this hatch that is being spoken of? The hatch in the middle of the three-story production area next, next to, the, to pump. the pump yeah. mm. to get a sense of where everything is coming from. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so Pesky B is making, uh, is on the way I'm there. going for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the gate is a, is a good option. If it's got intermittent light and um, doesn't seem to be in heavy use, that would be my uh, top choice of an entry point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, did it appear to have any sort of latch? Uh, it has like a electronic panel next to it. Um, some sort of like security access probably. Electronic panel next to the the single gate. person gate in the back in the of the rear fence. yeah uh, would i be able to use thieves tools on that or would that be hacking uh it would be hacking probably is it sealed by a magnetic latch or is it sealed by uh what looks like a physical like uh whatever those things are called that normal doors have uh, <laughs> uh, so it it is a door and a chain link fence mm-hmm um most of it, those have a magnetic thing like, yeah it's, it's like a... it's definitely got um some sort of electronic uh closure to it that's probably connected with that panel mm -hmm. um am i with highcroft since sure. i is assume the, the three of the you fence. are together unless pesky b yeah. you're trying to enter separately i'm trying to get to a different place so yeah, yeah, I That's think I would go, in on go over the fence in the darkness. Yep. Okay. Um, who do we want to visit first? Um, are you coordinating your entry in any way, or Probably is one do of it you simultaneously so that if one of us messes up, the other person gets in for sure? I would have told you okay. to wait until after I started my plan in motion. Yeah, yes. I would wait for Clara. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If, yeah, if yeah, there's yeah, any distractions, so you can distract us yep. or distract so, them from us uh make um jank and highcroft make a perception check for me okay aren't we waiting for the clara thing to occur oh, i already said them. they're off looking for my oh, stuff okay okay oh. yeah i have a next step to this but y'all would be doing stuff in the meantime okay got yeah. you got you uh, perception check so you said perception yeah because i did specifically hide it somewhere where you wouldn't find it like mm -hmm. on a cursor at cursor at glance so i, fully uh, I only i only rolled a nine i got a 21 it's much better. 21 you would definitely notice um two of the guards one from the kind of north 
gate air or north fencing area and one from the east fencing area um, head inside the three-story building. Okay. So two of the ones that were on patrol. Um, it leaves one patrolling the northern part and one patrolling the eastern part. Okay. We could take him out. Yeah. Them be, out. Be easy. Uh, if we need to. <laughs> yeah. Claire comes over the thing, it's like whispering, like, is that the. I think we were supposed to not be caught as spies. I think if you shoot all the guards, we're going to be <laughs> no, caught as spies. No, no I, can, uh, I can do a sleeper hold. Okay. Just, I, you know. I, I have Maybe an, don't I have just a, shoot him. They are on the inside of the gates. Yes, yeah, yeah, the the I have, I have a, a ring that if I touch someone with it, they will be knocked out. So. Maybe we should also just tell each other what we have real quick. Mm -hmm. sure. So that we yeah. know what capabilities what, uh, we share, yeah. share what I, gadgets you have. Yeah, <laughs> uh, since I have so many gadgets, I should probably either start or end. Uh, there's a lot that makes sense uh but i, I guess have, since, oh sorry i have a limited i have a more limited list um i use um a garot um and a taser um and i also have some throwing knives just in case and uh i can put people in a sleeper hold um to make them go night night um and i have sound dampening boots um, so I'm good at sneaking. That's the spy term. Make them go night night. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. right. That is all the all the best spies make people go night night. That's right. Um, my gadgets are the smallest too. I have a stung ring, and AR glasses. Mm -hmm. I've got. I, oh, sorry. I have a really nice vest, a really nice gun, and an exploding necklace. All right. So my list. <laughs> I have uh, an EMP device, um, a contact microphone so we can listen through walls, AR glasses, um, which I assume in this case, if we want to say that it is smart enough to use the IR cam on it, you could use for night vision stuff. Um, so you got a HoloLens. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, no, no. Future. Fu Future like gla they look like glasses. These are like uh, Tony Stark ones. Mm. Um, Google Glass. Mm -hmm. No, not Google Glass. <laughs> Google Glass was, was not, it was, it's not AR. Uh, <laughs> magnetic knuckles, so I can like pull uh, metal objects into my hand from a distance. Uh, stun ring, an exploding necklace, and a parachute bracelet if I need to jump from high heights. Okay. I know that Clara is also a, someone here is a helicopter pilot. Yes. I can fly helicopters. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, where we're at, you two are at the door. Pesky B, you're off a little bit further west, um, preparing to scale the fence, um, unless you had some other means of breaching the fence. Uh, there's a guard that patrols about halfway across that northern section, um, and one that patrols along the eastern side. Uh, the doorway itself has a security camera at it and a light that is somewhat on the fritz. Um, so that security camera kind of just like on a regular pattern of moving back and forth. Um, who, what are you doing at the door? Let's do that first. Door first. Is there enough time for us to approach the door during the swivel of the camera, or would we need to disable the camera first? Um, given, well, yeah, you would be able to approach from the side um, and get up there kind of under it, probably. You would just, a little bit of observation. It's not hard. All right. Um, <clears throat> Jenk, sorry. how's your hack? It's all right. It's all right. Uh, we've got, um, do we not have a tablet with a uh, built-in hack in it? Uh, yes, you have a tablet have with, a... with Dave's tools. Um... Actually, wait, I should, so, so it would take a, 
why would we need to hack this if it's just like an electrical connection in the middle of a fence? Couldn't I just use electrician's tools and my my proficiency in that to try and instead mess with the wiring? A security is it a security door. I mean, it's in a it's in a fence. So can we um, investigate it? Yes, yeah. you can <laughs> investigate it. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead and um, give me investigation checks. Uh, this is going on. Like, Clara's listening to y'all's co conversation of the comms, and it's like, <laughs> man, they do this the hard way. Like, <laughs> uh, investigation, I don't oh, see it. It's not in um, it's not a, it's game. Not Sorry. A Infotech? It, yes. Info, no, Infotech me, is for hacking. Uh, Infotech would work for this. Go ahead and, and give me that. 18. Uh, I can just tell you it's going to be high. Uh, I rolled a two, but I have plus 10, so it's a, <laughs> it's a 12. So, uh, Jenk, you do not pass this check. Um, 12 is not high enough, but the 18, um, Highcroft, you, uh, you can tell that the... Um, kind of the security panel is wired into the fence, mm -hmm. um, not just the door. Uh, it is definitely a computerized security system of some sort. Um, <clears throat> and there appears to be electrical cabling that connects the uh, security box, like the access panel to the fence itself. Oh, okay. Perfect. Seems like it's time to... Uh go whip out those electrician's tools and uh, see if I can disable the uh, power to the gate door itself. All right. And I have a, <laughs> I have a two times proficiency bonus when using the electrician's tools. So uh, what do I roll though? Um, so this is just gonna be a tools uh, check. So it's the D20 plus, you said you have double proficiency with those tools. Yeah. Uh, what are you attempting to do? To disable power to the thing that's holding the, the door closed. So to disconnect the power from the security panel to the door lock itself? Uh, yeah, basically. Um, more like to send you can make a thing, you can make it so that through the cable, you can just send the signal to unlock a door. This is like a real thing so you can actually do. Are you are you wanting to hack it or are you wanting to cut power? Uh, it's closer to cutting power. Okay. So um, there are, you would discover in examining it, uh, there are multiple power connections. Um, not just to the lock, but to the fence itself. Mm -hmm. So what are you cutting power to? Uh, isn't this a question for Jenk? Like, not for Alex? Like, <laughs> yeah. this is something you'd roll well, and so have the skill. What, what, I'm, what I'm telling you is um, there is power that is powering an electrical lock, and mm -hmm. there is power that is electrifying the fence. Oh, OK, OK. Um, Pesky B, do you think you'd be able to make it over uh, while it's still electrified? Do you have any rubber gloves? Do you have insulated clothes? I do. I, I think I do. Let me see. I have burglary clothing. Glo I have gloves. It doesn't say what type of gloves. So If it doesn't the say power, they're insulated, then I would assume the they're The power not. being off would be good. Mm. <laughs> Uh, what should we prioritize? Pesky B getting over or? Wait, you said, we... you said there, there's, there's power connections to both of them, right? There are, and you could physically cut the power to either of them, but this is tied into a security system. Of course, but we could physically cut it to both if we wanted. Yeah, you could. Cool, okay. Could we cut the power to the fence for Pesky B and simultaneously I hack to open the door. Well, as soon as we cut the power to anything, 
that security system is going to go off. So well, if I can only go in, if we have to do one one way, I can go in with you guys and then just go to my location. There's only one way we can go in. Okay. Is, is setting off is turning off either of them going to set off the security, or is just turning off both of them going to set off the security? That would be something that you would need to investigate using an infotech. All right. Yes. Um. Okay. Well, I rolled a thirty. Whoa. Yeah, with a 30 on Infotech, you would definitely be able to tell that, yeah, tampering with the electrical current in the fence or tampering with the lock in the fence itself would trigger alarms. Um, so your best bet is to hack the system mm. so that those alarms would not go off. Uh, don't set off the alarms, please. Yeah, I think it's time to hack. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Is so Hycroft can... the hacker? Or I'm sorry. Who, who has the most? Oh, I can system? hack. If other folks can't hack, other there, so uh, metagame, there are several uh, classes that can hack. Some are better than the ghost, but I can. Um, I know that I can, but I just don't have any of the tools. I have. Um, or hacking I can tools and proficiency have, with hacking tools. Oh, you have proficiency with hacking tools, then mm -hmm. have at it. Hack proficiently. All I have is just a stupidly high int score to throw at it. <laughs> All right, so um, hacking. Did you want to um, try to... How do you want to proceed with hacking? There are a couple of different options. Um, if you need to refer to the rules on hacking, um, page 13 of the quick start guide is where they start. Um, basic actions would be access, install, or delete. Um, hacking and actual like doing the kind of uh, similar to combat uh, progression of hacking itself includes attacking, encrypting, decrypting, modifying, and disabling. Um, so how do you want to approach this uh, security system? Disabling. Mm. That does seem like the best plan, I would think. Let's see, you said this is on page 13. This is 13. a wholly new uh, thing. Yeah, this is definitely me. something that is, uh, it's similar to using magic uh, as far as the way that it operates. Um, so as you're hacking, uh, it's going to be your Attack hacking, modifier for attack. hacking would be proficiency plus intelligence. Okay. Um, and so if you want to try and um, attack this system, you can attempt to, to dig your way into it. Um, you said you have a hacking tools kit or yes. some sort of hacking tool. Mm -hmm, I do. Um, so do you want to try and defeat the system or do you want to try and by bypass the system? Um, let's see, what does that look like? Actually, how does it affect? Because my inclination would be to, um, to disable or bypass, not um, to attack and you know raise suspicion. Yeah. So there are a couple of different ways that uh, that that can manifest. Um, I just have to look up the DC. It's really just a difference in, in what the DC is, if I remember right. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, just go ahead and um, give me a hacking check. Uh, so just roll the d20, add your... Um, intelligence and proficiency a hack attack Ooh, that's not good that one <laughs> that uh, one yep that one so it's a five um so, that is not good yeah um you fail uh oh. you trigger um something in the system it recognizes that you should not have access um and Nothing immediate is obvious to you, but you definitely feel like the system has triggered something internal to itself. Um, 
Yeah. I need to look at internal security real quick. I have a thing written down that's called internal security, and it says what I wrote as the short version on the tiny piece of my character sheet is reroll int for save for hack. Um, it, the alarms are going off now, <laughs> like all over. Um, well, let's see if if internal security helps with that before we know that. Because um, I do have a grappling hook. So if things are going off anyway and everybody's distracted, I would might as well just, <laughs> I would shoot my grappling hook on the fence and use my th rubber soles to keep me bouncing off the fence, you know, so I don't get electrified. So this this uh, does not use a government programming infrastructure. So okay, that would not it's... apply. Okay. So you triggered something. Um, there are no like, audible or visible alarms going off. Uh, there's nothing immediate to you, uh, but you definitely triggered something in their internal network. Um, so you don't know if it's monitored, but their network definitely registered an intrusion. That's not good, y'all. <laughs> That's what you hear in your ear. <laughs> What's not good? What are y'all doing? <laughs> Oopsie. Oopsie. Is that also a spy <laughs> term I'm unaware of? Along with put them to night night. <laughs> um, um about this time, uh Crowfoot. Um Yeah, she keeps she keeps like going back and being like, have they found it yet? Knowing full well they the chances of them finding are extremely slim because she purposely hid it in a place where they wouldn't find it. She says, have yeah. they found it? Uh, so about this time, um, Sam Leffler turns back to you and says, they couldn't find it. Do you know more specifically where you lost the darn thing? Because, well, if, so I could show you the path we walked to like the specific places we went. If you, if you, if could one of them come get me and I could show you. They look very <laughs> annoyed. Um, but they they call on the um, on the com, and they tell um, Harrison Lewis get back outside. Muhammad, get up here and escort this person to go and find their passport. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry about this. Thank you yeah. so much. I appreciate it. I really, I, I really thank you so much. They just closed the glass. <laughs> <laughs> she, just, like, um, she just keeps nodding like, yeah, yeah. She's used <laughs> to this. This is exactly the reaction she wants. <laughs> <laughs> um, Highcroft and Jank, uh, I need you to roll for me um, perception. Okie doke. 21. Uh, you notice that the door to the building that is inside from where this gate is, um, is starting to open. And so... is the door, so the, the door that we are trying to open after stopping the fence from being electrified? Is it opaque or is it something you can see through? Uh, so the door itself can't be seen through, but the fence is a chain link fence. Okay, but like, what if we just hugged up against the door though? So <laughs> you can certainly try. <laughs> so if you wanna do that, that'll be um, stealth. No disadvantage? Um, no, no disadvantage. I think just need stealth checks to see if you're right. able to stay hidden while the guards emerge from the building. Yep, mm -hmm. trying to hide. I think that's what I'm going to do. 24. Very hardy. Uh, mm -hmm. 13 plus 5, uh, 18. Yeah, the guards don't notice you. Um, they go back and rejoin their patrols and um, the guard who had remained on patrol on the Eastern side, you don't see them passing anymore. Um, 
Are you continuing to try and uh, pop open that door or disable the electric fence? Um, yeah, wait, we can see everything, right? Or like is seeing things going to put us in harm in like visible way of being caught to like look at, to look for an opening? Like I if we're trying to peek around the door, is that making it easier for us to get caught? Um, so the the two guards are just on their regular patrol. They gotcha. basically patrol to that door and then back mm -hmm. to the corner. Um, they're not super worried about an intrusion and they're kind of just like walking together and chatting rather than like alternating. Mm -hmm. um, Perfect. Um, Jenk is very much like the guns blazing type, but she's holding back. So far, doors are defeating you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah holding, it, I was going to say, I don't know if it's holding back. If no, no, it's <laughs> holding back because of the door. <laughs> Otherwise, like Jenk normally, if not for Clara being in the comms, being like, don't set off the alarm, Jenk would be like, I'm setting off the alarm. I'm these, <laughs> these are the orders we received from the producer. Right. <laughs> they, they just have to not know it's the, all that. The orders That's were, was, they just have to know that it's not uh, the organization. It's not like we, it could, things could happen. Like it doesn't have to be totally covert. It's just that the blame cannot fall upon right. us. Yeah. At the, so at the point that I fail, uh, I'm like, Jank, you should just like disable the electric fence and we'll jump over. I can jump. Give me. Um... I don't have to jump. You don't have to jump if the electric fence is down. We just run straight. Who, whoever is uh, techie minded, so Highcroft and Jank, give me info tech uh, checks, please. Uh, very high. Give me one second. SKB, what's your take on all this? Uh, twenty-five. So Seven. Is the electricity down on the fence? No. Uh, oh, but okay, Jank. All you have to do to disable the electrified fence and make it so that the fence could be scaled and climbed is interrupt the circuit. And with a chain link fence, you could do that just by cutting the fence. You've already triggered the alarm. Oh, yeah, the alarm's true. already triggered? Like you've already yeah, triggered a failed. security alarm internally, uh, cutting the fence. Mm -hmm. Well, might trigger an audible alarm, but you've already alerted the system that there's an intrusion. I see. Well, then, uh, I think I'm going to do both still. Like, I don't want to have to, I'm not built to jump this fence. So, <laughs> I'm well, gonna... so on the other I'm... side, I might be able to open the door. What uh, I'm saying is you could use your electrician's tools to cut the chain link. Mm-hmm. Uh, right which gotcha. would disrupt the circuit and make it not electrified anymore. And then mm -hmm. if you had your wire cutters on you or whatever, you just mm -hmm. snip out the rest of the fence and walk right through. That's fair. All right. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know if that's exactly how these fences normally work, but sure. I'll, you, 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 know world, enough about, do, yeah. you know enough about the construction of electrified fences here that you know that you would break the circuit by okay. cutting the fence. Cool. Well, then, yes, I do that. Uh, I, I uh, cut the fence and I just start rapidly trying to cut a hole to to dash through. I, as soon as the electricity is down, I'm going over. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Me too. Is that? And there's no, the there's strategy? no, there's no like <laughs> alerts. There's no like audible alarms going off. Was there any attempt to cover up the cut fence? Do you want to try oh, like and the, disguise the, the cutting it up the way? fence, like the hole? Well, the hole that you leave behind. See, this is why I didn't want to do that. <laughs> this is why I just <laughs> wanted to go through the door. Like I could just cut one wire and go through the door. I mean, if you want to try that, then yeah, you just make a check with your electrician's tools. Okay. Can I? Yes. So from the other side of the door, when I was scoping things out with my drone, could I see the back side of this door? And if so, would I know if I'm on the other side of the fence, could I just open the door? Yeah, is it push button? 
Uh, no, it's electrically controlled. There's a security panel on the other side as well. Okay, so you need a, a code or something from either side. All uh, right, uh, I'm I'm okay. cutting one small piece of the fence to disable the elect the electricity so that pesky bee can get going, and uh, and then cutting the wire to disable the door. That's okay. It. Uh, and you said yeah. it to make a check with my tools. Yeah, just uh, make a check with your electrician's tools. So, uh, are you proficient in electrician's tools? Yeah, and I get a double bonus on it. And yeah. uh, that would be 22. Yeah, no problem. You clip the right things, the door pops open. Um, you broke the circuit on the fence, so it's no longer electrified. So you have breached the outer perimeter. <laughs> um, and about that time, uh, Muhammad uh, wanders over. He's got um, kind of dusky skin. He's wearing a security guard's office or security guard's uniform. It says Muhammad on the name tag. Um, likely a last name because that's how the how Leffler was. Um, You've got, it, he's also just doesn't look terribly concerned. He's like, what's going on? I, they said just, I needed to. Yeah, yeah so, uh, a mountain of words like, <laughs> let me tell you about how, like, so I was here earlier. I was, uh, I was getting on a tour. We were talking about some business and I, 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 I lost my passport. She's still like crying and she works the tears up again. And she's like, and I just, if I can show you the path we walked, I'm sure we'll find it. I know I had it. I know I had it here. I showed it to uh, a Leffler here and, and then, um, when I was, I was back in the car and I got home and it wasn't there anymore and, and I need it. I got a plane to catch tomorrow and my dad's going to be so mad. It's, it's okay. We'll, we'll help you. We'll, we'll help you get oh, it. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you so much. He buzzes you through the little gate at the front uh, and starts walking you over towards the office building um, because you said you were in the office building. So he's going to walk you through there first to make mm -hmm. sure that you didn't drop it in there. Yep. Um Walks in there looking very he's, earnestly. He's really cordial. He's got, um, he's probably like 40s as well. Like um, a little pudgy, uh, kind of dusky skin, um, dark hair. Uh, he has like uh, a patch of like rough dry skin on his cheek. Mm -hmm. uh, he's really a really nice guy. Yep. Um chatting about like his wife at home and their new baby as he walks you through um looking for your passport yeah she she also just like basically is like narrating everything she did when she was here earlier she was like so they brought me in here and i talked to luna and luna was like yeah the joy will be right back out and and you should get you some water and i i had a little bit of water. it was great and luna said she was going to give it i do take a look was there she said she had gotten like a case of it is it like behind the secretary's like desk still? yes Okay. Yes, it is still there. I do ask him, are you going to give any of the water to your 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 kids? Oh, I, once it's available, once they let us have it, absolutely. Um, oh, yeah. and Puritan good. has such good, nice, clean food. Uh, and Exciting. I mean, you know, there's been all of that enteritis happening around the country. I, I, it's, you know, it's unfortunate for adults, but, you know, kids can die from it. So I yeah. want to make sure they get clean stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and then and then she took me down this hallway and I met Joy and we talked for a bit and then she took me over. She, we, we actually went over there to the other facility. She was taking me on a tour. Yep, so there he's he's taking you through the office building right now, visiting the places that you were, letting you look for your passport. Uh, while you're going through that building, um, the rest of you have reached the gate. Uh, and where are you headed? So the door that the guards walked out of uh, when they went to go on the shift, is it still open? No, they closed it behind them. With I'm what like... means? <laughs> How did they close it? What is it closed with? They is it, turned is it around a... and closed no, 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 the door. No. Is, it like a, it is it a mechanical latch or is it like a, <laughs> it another like, electrical or something? It looks like a standard door with a little round knob on it and uh, like... Uh, shatterproof glass. Who's got the little lock picking rectangular tools. window? I have um, thieves tools. Deadbolt. That's cool. Like pretty standard 
uh, door. Hi, Croft. Uh, help me with Pesky this. Pesky B, where were you headed? Because you were trying for the same building that they're about to try and enter. That's where the manhole is? Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to go there too, but I guess from the back way. They are entering the back way. Okay. <laughs> I meet up with them. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> runs unless, the edge of the fence. unless you wanted to try and enter from like the third floor through the vents or something like yeah, they're I have a about grappling to, gun they're about to try and breach the back door <laughs> all right lock pick it yeah who has the best lock picking ability um let's see here what is i would imagine group? highcroft probably yeah does cuz you're an infiltrator uh yeah. i mean i have a plus 6 you're in the front. You don't matter. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'm saying, if we're just if we're just comparing stats, <laughs> and you know, have Dex. So you have that... the thieves' tools. Yeah. Um, and I would probably say that it would just be a thieves' tools check. Uh, I have something called burglary clothing. Is that right, or is that something else? That's I'll just burglary stuff clothing. My would shirt be like to the lock. Like the black, like balaclava and okay. clothes, and yeah. Okay. Is that what you're wearing right yes, now? Yes, that's say what I'm is. wearing. Yep, <laughs> yeah. yep, it definitely is. There was like some really interesting descriptions for like the specifically the burglary clothing. It was like, it was more than just like dark material. It was like specially designed so that you make minimal noise if you brushed on your own. You're very quiet, craft. basically. Were you, uh, were you trying to pick the lock with your thieves' tools? Yes, I'm looking to see. Is that just um, is that just proficiency or is it proficiency plus dex? Um, is that right? That seems right, but I'm not sure. Never been a rogue. Well, <laughs> was a mastermind rogue one time. Um, so that's what I'm double checking. I don't know. Uh, Jonathan, how does that typically work in 5e um, for tool checks? Uh, just be dexterity plus uh, proficiency bonus. Okay. In five E, there's Perfect. not. It's not like a specific tool. It's more like a skill proficiency. Right. Yeah. She has right. The thieves' tool proficiency and thieves' tools are generally dexterity. A different tool set. You as the DM can override yeah. and say, "I think this is a strength check or whatever." So yeah, but... this for thieves' tools, it's definitely dexterity, and you are proficient with the tools, so you can add your proficiency bonus. Perfect. So that is going to be a 14. Yeah, I mean, it's a simple lock. That would be yeah. enough to, to spring that lock open. Um, yeah, it's unlocked. That's all. We go in, I guess, right? I mean, what else? Like, we're not going to stand there outside the door. No. Nope. <laughs> Unless I mean, you really want to use that grappling gun. Just get up top. <laughs> I'll save it. Save it for that escape. Mm -hmm. Save it. Right. And when I go down I'll the manhole. Hang on, I'll hang on as you swing and then let go and parachute away. <laughs> so I'll stay with them in the main building uh, first before going to the the area where the product right. is. Prepped. So where's the manhole? Is like in the center? Are you entering the building? Yes, and closing the door very promptly. All right. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold uh, on. I'm going to crack the door. Uh, huh? Is a, is a, are the guards coming up behind us right now? Like, uh, They are definitely about to turn and head back towards where you're at. Okay, well, I quickly poke my uh, periscope around through, through the door <laughs> just to make sure that there's no guards on the other side. All right. Um, how does that work? What is the description? I'm just basically say? looking around the corner without. It just lets you do reveal. perception checks. It let, around the yeah, it lets you do a check basically around the corner without them being able to see you. It doesn't. It doesn't say that you can do that. It just. It's like an in fiction thing. It's like it's one of those. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah. Make a perception check. If only I had invested in perception. Uh, fifteen. Yeah. Uh, so there don't appear to be any guards that are immediately on the other side of the door. All right, then we gotta we move go. quick. So do you advance into the room? Yes. Or do you or just Jank enter? Does. Or Jank goes in 
like shepherding everyone in so that we can close the door so that the guards don't see us. Okay. Um, yeah. So as you enter... I'm looking for the manhole that Clara told us about. Yep. So uh, as you enter, you're going to see basically um, a lot of what I had described earlier to Crowfoot. Um, the light inside is dim. Uh, there's a walled bay in the northwest where boxes of finished product are stacked. There's a loading zone in front of that and the bay door that leads to the storage facility next door. In the southwest is a walled room and two smaller walled rooms to the east of that. Uh, north center is the final bottling machinery. It's a series of machines that move bottles along for labeling, topping, and boxing. The entire east wall has the main bottling apparatus. Southeast is the tanks for the activated carbon. Um, and northeast are sections that expand the plastic discs and fill the bottles. The tanks in the southeast are connected uh, via a large pipe to the fenced area in the center where there is the three-story pump. There's a hatch in the floor next to the pump on the other side of the um, one-story high wrought iron fence. Um, against the wall in the northeast is another set of walled, uh, another walled area with rooms. Uh, most of the area is open to the third floor. The walled areas in the southwest extend up to the second floor uh, where there's that walkway and then there's the catwalk up on the third floor. Uh, the area inside smells faintly of wet rock, like the inside of a cave and a little bit like machine oil. Uh, there's no smell of chlorine that one might expect in a water bottling facility. Uh, there's light um, coming from windows and an open door on the second floor. Um, and you can faintly hear the sound of a television coming from the Southwest area. Uh, you hear Petronella Page, a well-known talk show host and a man speaking. Petronella Page, Mr. Jones, tell me about this exciting new product, water. And the man's voice replies, water pure and clean is the latest offering from Puritan Foods. We've all noticed the significant spike in enteritis across the country from contaminated drinking water. Puritan is here to help. We've tapped a deep aquifer in the Colorado Rockies and we're bringing that pure, clean water to you for just $19.99 a liter. Amazing, but how do your viewers, how do our viewers know it's as pure and clean as you say? As with all Puritan products, our focus is on minimal processing. We take the natural source of pollution-free Colorado aquifer water that's been filtered through layers of rock over many millennia and bring it to you with only mild filtering. No heavy chemicals here. Great, simply great. When can we expect it on store shelves? We start shipments on Monday, so your viewers should see water, pure and clean, from Puritan Foods on store shelves next week. And the program continues to air in the background. Why are they hosting a TV spot at 2 a.m.? I think You're it's hearing a TV it's a commercial <laughs> yeah. on a yeah. TV. <laughs> it, no, it sounded like a, like it? one of those QVC kind of like, oh, get the water. <laughs> like, why would you sell this at 2 a.m.? Is this it is in the break deal. room? Is that coming from the break room area? So it's coming the from security what, area. Uh, what Crowfoot identified as the security area up on the second floor. Um, there's light coming from that room Lingo. and you're hearing the sound of the television. Um, and, you know, Petronella Page is like a huge talk show host in uh, America and somebody watching reruns of it at night would not be unusual. All right. Hmm. Well. I well, need to make my way towards the hatch. Is the hatch enclosed in the fence area in the middle? Or is it outside that where the pump the, is? The hatch is inside the wrought iron fencing in the middle of the room. Is that electrified or anything or is it just fencing? Wrought iron fencing. It seems like it's just to prevent like machinery from knocking into the pump. Okay. How high is it? It goes up uh, one story. So I could use my grappling hook. School. I'm all grappling about the grappling hook. hook. <laughs> not the gun, <laughs> not the gun yet, but just the hook, just to get it up with my rope yes. to get it up over. Yes, you could. That's how I get up and over. Uh, uh, so you start moving so, across the room. It's gonna be so great when you like fail your check. <laughs> you, you start moving across the room, like towards, like around the wall, and then where I have to go 
Towards the center, yeah, I'll have to go towards the center. Yeah, okay, so um, as you begin moving around in the space, uh, there is uh, alarm klaxons start to go. Uh, there is a security gate that drops in front of the door behind you um, and the lights turn out. I think I've got my IR, AR glasses. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, what do I see in the darkness? I also have AR glasses. Um, I have night eyes. Wait, that's way better than oh, AR glasses. Sorry, but... then um, then yeah, no, none of that happens. I forgot that you all had um, that kind of stuff. Uh, you would <laughs> see um, there is a laser array in here um, connecting various paths around the floor. Um, and so you would have to um, navigate or disable the laser alarms um, or potentially trigger security. <laughs> so we see this before, we, before so I go we, into the room. So are we, yes. okay. is this like a retcon have... like rollback? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because I didn't remember that you all had those um, viewing devices. Yeah, in fact, we should be able to see <laughs> IR lasers right now if we wanted to check. We'd have yeah, to check. So they are but... all through this space. There are laser alarm tripwires throughout. Mm. Can we they're, investigate They're moving or are they the... static? <laughs> um, they are moving, sweeping in certain areas as L well like as A laser, a, a sweeping laser? Yes. So it's uh, that's not possible. Okay, that's not whatever. Sorry. No, <laughs> this is a this is a magical spot. Yeah. In the world. <laughs> it's not the real world. I'm like I'm like my engineer brain's like, no, no, this <laughs> you is can totally, never do that. <laughs> totally Mission Impossible cinematics. That's like canceling out the point of the laser in the first place if you move it. <laughs> um, cool. Well, uh, yeah, can we identify the um, source so that we um, can disable yes. it? So there are various sources. It, it's a network of a, a bunch of different lasers. Um, so you, you can try and access security systems. If are they want, moving in a pattern? You can, try and, you can try and acrobatics across through them. I think there I can try are that. a couple of different approaches. Do it. Do it. Do um, it. Do it. Do it. Do the acrobatics. <laughs> I'm going to acrobatic. Yeah. If there's a pattern to it, I'm. I can. I think I have yeah, the, go for the it. skills to do it. <laughs> go for it. All right. So I'm um, still going to try to approach that manhole cover, so, but so avoid to, avoiding the lasers. To be clear, that's Jonathan saying do it. Far in her head is like, man, I really hope they don't do that. <laughs> it's never yeah. going to work. <laughs> do it. Do it. Go for it. Um, do I need to roll? Yes. So acrobatics. Oh, yes. <laughs> Man, you should be really good at that. 16 plus 5, 21. Ooh. 21 will get you there safely. Um, so you, um, you hold the others back for a second. Take a, take deep a good look around the room with your AR glasses, and they're like... Uh, predicting the movements and things and giving you all this information. You take a moment and you just start tumbling across the room, a hand here, uh, drop to the floor there so that you're flat and the laser sweeps across your back. You headstand. flip up, back, back flip, handstand, headstand in one spot, uh, spin around windmilly legs, um, tumbling <laughs> through these lasers without hitting a single one. And you come up to the wrought iron fence, toss up your little grappling hook, pull yourself up at the last second before another laser sweeps across where your feet were gonna be and uh, drop down inside the wrought iron fence. I've got us. Made it guys. <laughs> that was easy. Clara's mine where she goes. Uh, I really hope that uh, there's something important in that pothole, the man. <laughs> <laughs> You made a big deal about it, so. I did about, make a big about deal this about time, uh, Muhammad has walked you across the little gap between the office building and the mm -hmm. manufacturing facility, and you're just now entering the employee 
lounge area on the first floor of the manufacturing facility. And she's still narrating everything they did before. And she's doing that specifically so y'all know where they're at and like how close they are to you so that you can react if they get close. So it comes off as just like a nervous tick of like this this character she is but like she's doing it for a specific reason and she's just like yeah and we went to the lounge and she's just like looking and she will given any feedback that y'all provide make a decision about whether to delay like toss a room more thoroughly versus Mm -hmm. like letting it pass um and like moving on based on any information y'all provide about where you're located yep we should do that (laughs) (laughs) so we're close we're close Pesky's um, in the manhole. So Pesky <laughs> is there at the manhole. Um, so I, w- I would inspect the hatch first. Yeah, it just looks like a hatch. Nothing, no wires going to it or anything. None of the lasers, special. lasers are inside here. <laughs> Nothing special. Does it lift up easily? Yeah, you reach down and it just pops up. Uh, there's a ladder inside that goes down a shaft. Yep. Go, go in the hole, please. And. Um, <laughs> Um, we about have this to time, find a place to be. <laughs> about this time, you hear um, over the intercom, <clears throat> you hear a woman's voice. What do you think you're doing? The Nutripon is next door beyond the soldiers. There's nothing here for you. Security is aware of your presence and they're on the way. It'd be best if you would just go ahead and exit. The tumbling was a nice touch. Clearly you have some skills, but there's nothing here that would be of interest unless your corporate spies looking for secrets. I'd advise you go back out the way you came or things could get a mite complicated. Jank's not putting up with this. Jank uh, triggers the EMP device to try and just kill the speakers oh. nearby. So, <laughs> before that happens, do I hear that too? Is it just the intercom? And yeah, the other no, room? it's it's in the manufacturing facility and you're inside. Okay. I look at Muhammad and I go, what kind of marketing is that? <laughs> That's weird. Uh, and he tries to reassure you. Um, he's like, it's okay. There's some sort of security breach that was going on. Um, it shouldn't affect you. I mean, hopefully you've dropped your stuff in here. We might have to go back outside if things um, get a little complicated. Wait, so but they'll tell me over the radio. Is it is it dangerous? I mean, it's probably just some of those kids from the and she, she kind of gets outside. Like behind, like... Like she's sort of hiding behind him a little bit, and she's like, so, "So, there's there's people here who just like broke in." I um, it seems like yeah, somebody was trying to mess with our gate. There was some sort of security alarm. Does oh. Clara recognize the voice? By the way, the she's, um, is it Joy Ang is essentially I think would. Oh, uh, roll for um. What do we want to have you roll? No one else could recognize it, but Clara could. No, okay. I, I'm going to have all of you roll. I want you... Insight? What Ooh. would be the equivalent of history History in this system? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it might just be a straight intelligence check. I was about to say insight. Yeah, and I'm, like, That's I'm just not... going to ask for intelligence checks because this would definitely be history and they don't really have a history role. Uh, but it, it would be tied to like espionage. Uh, so let's go ahead and say espionage. Mm. Plus one. Oh, okay. Espionage check, I have zero. But... Well, you can all roll this. I got a three. I got a twenty-five. Whoa! Someone is have, espionage. Uh, no, I, I just have way too much. Highcroft got a nat one. <laughs> I rolled a nat one again, so I got an eight. Oh my okay, goodness. so Jank, um, yes, it is a voice that you recognize. Uh, it is the voice of. A syndicate agent by the name of, or by the uh, known just simply as Saturn. 
Syndicate meaning they're part of our organization? No, they're not part Syndicate of Syndicate is the um, corporate entity that owns Puritan Foods. Ah. Uh, Bad guys. So they are a spy with Syndicate. What's the Syndicate uh, spy's their, name? Saturn, their code name is Saturn. Saturn. Uh, and they're here. You don't know a whole lot about them, uh, but you have heard their voice before. Being very snarky in a different situation. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I already said that I was activating uh, the EMP, which it looks like I'm able to use the device over and over again, um, okay. just as an action. So uh, tell me what it does. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of... Um, I. What I'm effectively trying to do with it is just disable a bunch of the cameras, disable the speakers, just kind of kill all the electronics. In... What's the range? Uh, I Let me grab it. I know I have a thing that lets me extend the range too. Um, so this, it is. this is really not great for yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> you should uh, definitely do it, but yeah. Yes. Uh, like this... gonna knock our comms out. <laughs> oh no 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 no! I'm, yeah. I, like the goal is to throw it at like a distance so that it's not gonna hit. Okay. Me. How far can you throw it, and what is the range of effect? Palm-sized device is an electromagnetic pulse generator and antenna that creates a pulse of electromagnetic energy that damages all electrical objects and devices. As an action, you can activate this activate this device either manually or remotely, causing D twenty eight or D two. That 2d8 electrical damage to all electronic devices and objects within a 30 foot radi radius, regardless of line of sight. Uh, this includes any electronic devices used by or in the possession of the team if caught in the pulse. Um, so, where are you throwing it? Uh, I could, I mean, I can put it anywhere. I don't have to time it. I can, I can trigger it remotely. So, um, uh, We've already kind of set off the alarms, it seems. Oh, wait, but the lasers. no one's touched no. the lasers yet. So yeah, the, right. the physical alarms have not gone off, but um, you all alerted Saturn to your presence when you um, were breaching the gate outside. And Saturn already said that the security has been alarmed to come. Yes. But that doesn't seem to be the case with Mohammed. Yeah, like, y'all don't, who, know, don't who, know that. Who's been who's been alarmed? <laughs> well, I guess y'all would hear my conversation. Yeah, with my you you've yeah. been you've been walking and touring the place, and what well, I also was like, is that a is that a weird marketing you thing? Heard, you would have heard um, Muhammad's radio go off, and I'm just for like my... you you would have known. Uh, but you're in close proximity to Muhammad, so communicating back to the others that security yeah. was on the way. I'm would trying have, to find my. We would my have had a code which would have been sure. that I had on as being a gadgeteer, and it's just a very big rule book. Uh, <laughs> I found a way to say bananas. They're on the way. And this whole situation. Well, bananas. Is bananas. Yeah, I can't believe I lost my password. So bananas. Of, of the timing of things, basically, you all made it in. Uh, Pesky B, you did your tumble. Um, you found out like scroll, security scroll, was alerted scroll, and was scroll, on the way scroll, scroll, um, scroll. <clears throat> basically right after you got inside the building, uh, which was about the time that um, Crowfoot was entering the building with Muhammad. So you would have gotten that notice about the same time that the uh, message from Saturn was coming over the PA and Muhammad would have just been checking in with security. Um, so you just got inside the building um okay well yeah i'm not gonna use my range extender on it because that would totally get us in the range of the the pulse blast but basically i'm gonna try and just slide it along the floor into as far middle as it can go i assume at this okay. point pesky b is like down the hole i'm gonna go yeah if he's, if he's doing that i'm gonna go down the hole to try to get out of range yeah i okay. mean i would warn and jank is she um, mm -hmm. and uh, not he. yeah, yeah, and uh, then uh, yeah, I assume Highcroft's beside me, so I don't have to worry. Yep. And uh, I'm just gonna right. hit the button. 
Okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, go ahead and... Um, Do I have to roll... roll 2d8 or will it just take out the cameras and the lasers? Well, roll because uh, there are other things that it might take out. Okay. <laughs> uh, oh, get back here. All right, nine. Uh, it was nine four, four plus five, so nine. Okay. Um, yeah, the systems um, blink for a minute, but then they come back on. Oh. That's it? Were they were EMP protected? Wiring and just wasn't enough it, damage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm tempted that to just smash wasn't the enough to fully <laughs> knock them out. So um... <laughs> I mean if if it did cause a flash, would that be enough for me to make it to the science door? You can attempt it. Um give me I'm going to say athletics. Is there mm, athletics? There yeah, is, but could yes. it be acrobatics? Yeah, sure. <laughs> How are you getting there? It's tumbling. How are you traveling? Um, <laughs> tumbling. <Doing> cartwheels. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple tumbles. Um, yeah, acrobatics would definitely be better for me personally. Um, sure. 16. Now, because this is a really, really short blink window um it's gonna be difficult sure so you said 16 16 no oh well <laughs> opening the door night vision um, so you, you get part way there but the lasers came back on and you trip the lasers and and the security gate drops the lights go out um but hey, perfect. The the gates are down. There's no way the guards can get us now. <laughs> Clara just like s- s- just barely shakes her head like, oh my god. <laughs> Jinx like <laughs> Jinx like, well, I mean, I don't care Muhammad about the lasers is... now and just runs over and picks Muhammad's up like, her what's EMP. Go- She's like, what's Mu- going on? Muhammad's like, I think we're gonna have to take you back outside now. Okay. Uh, we'll We'll sweep the place thoroughly and find your passport, but it seems like things are not going normally, and we need to check on this. So I'm going to escort you back out. Okay. You know what to do. So he's moving to oh, escort yeah. you out of the building and take you back up to hey, the security sir. gate. Yeah. So I'm down the hatch. I want to explore my surroundings. So, so she's like, I'm a little scared. <laughs> you should go look. I'll I'll go back to the front gate. And she just yeah. sort of like takes off and starts jogging. Uh, like towards Wait, the gate. But no, there are other guards for that. And he starts running after you. Uh, then I'm going to turn on escape notice. <laughs> so during okay. a chase, uh, as a bonus action, I can hide. Uh, if I'm successful, then uh, the chase ends and they stop chasing me and I'm just hidden somewhere okay. in the room. So that should be um, that should be a stealth check yep. to hide. Gonna go for it. Dun, 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 dun. Let me look up his stats. <laughs> mm, not great. <laughs> Wait, no, I, get, um, I think I get advantage on stealth. Yes. Okay. Try this again because the first time was an 11. Second time was an 11. Oh, the second score. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. 11 is not good enough to escape his notice. Um, he is a security guard. He is trained she, to watch. So she like goes down like the wrong like corridor, and then uh, when she realizes he like he stops Excuse and like me, falls. Miss, in, this he's is like, not the way back. <laughs> she starts like looking around, and she goes, "Wait, this isn't the way back." <laughs> no, it is not. Come this which way. way. Oh, which way? Oh, this way. And she starts going in that direction. <laughs> so he starts. He starts na- escorting you back up to the security. She's still. Gate. She's just still sort of jogging, and she's playing it up like she's really scared of like mm-hmm. what's going on. Um. Uh, yeah, but she, she will. Um, she, she eventually may try it again if we get to a place that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so right now you're um you're between the house and the manufacturing building. Pesky B, um, go ahead and give me, uh, well, so you're heading down. Um, how far down do you go? 
it just seems like a, a ladder that just keeps going and going. Well, I went down as far to get away from the MP blast. EMP blast. Yeah, you're at least 30 feet down. Yeah, so I would say about 35 feet. Yeah, the ladder just continues on below you. Time to grappling hook and repel. Then you go down <laughs> fast? I mean, I think I'm going to... The ladder keeps going, right? Yeah. I'll just keep going down the ladder. How far? So you're going to hit uh, 100 feet, 150 feet, and My speed is 35, so... <laughs> Um, Wait, I'm, I'm going to <laughs> drop something. I'm going to, I have ball bearings, so I'm going to drop some of my you ball bearings. You don't have bearings. to drop them. No, no, no. Just, just hook your grappling hook and then just, <laughs> just repel on down. If you I, drop a ball I bearing. Want to hear, yeah, I want to hear how far down it, it is. Oh. That's why I'm dropping it, the ball bearings. So the ladder extends about 200 feet down, and then you come to a, a, like a gantry platform, um, like a resting area, and then there's another ladder that continues down again. There's some piping alongside the ladder that you can see. Um, it really seems like this is access to service the pump. That is Does it, a large pump that extends deep into the ground. Pretty new, newly built or something that's older than? Uh, it's about the same age as the rest of the building. manufacturing equipment. Nothing seems out of place. I'm the journey to the center down. of the earth. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> while you're exploring under there, Highcroft, what were you doing? Uh, I want, um, if I, well, at first I want to check to see if the room to the, um, testing area, the science area, the lab, uh, mm -hmm. is, um, secured, um, or not. Um, my interest is, um, documents, um, any documents on like testing this water um, mm. so that I can use that later for reasons. Okay. Uh, make an investigation check. Perfect. And, and oh, and let's see. Espionage? Um, or M let me look. Gathering. Yeah, go ahead with espionage. Okay. 20. Um, yeah, so you're able to easily locate the testing reports. Um, they have checked the water, tested it for um, impurities, uh, mostly focusing on bacterial uh, contamination, as well as um, honestly visible impurities, checking to make sure there's no nothing floating around in the water, uh, smell, taste, um, all sorts of testing around that. Um, their tests show that the water is clean. Um, there's no bacterial contamination, no viruses. Um, one area that you can tell that they have not specifically tested is um, fungal contamination or fungal infestation or like that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. mm. Suspicious, put that in my bag. Nice. And then I'm. Um, wait, what are we closed out, out to of Jank. now that the supposedly doors have closed around different things? Uh, so the exterior doors have closed. Um, about this time, uh, there are about six guards that enter the main room. How? Uh, they're coming through the exterior door. The one that they, had a huge metal wall drop a, in front of it? There is a grate that closed. They come in, they unlock the grate, throw it up, and start coming inside. Oh, cool. The grate's ah. up. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I'm really tempted to throw a flashbang and kind of. Good word for flashbangs. 
<laughs> the code name for flashbangs is hey there bright eyes so <laughs> make sure you say it before you throw it <laughs> yeah so everyone knows um, wait what is the uh, i'm confused <laughs> So before you throw a flashbang, you're supposed to say this over the calm so everybody knows to cover their oh. eyes. <laughs> um, so at this point, um, I do need people to roll initiative. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, And all the guards are just in the door, right? Uh, six guards just came in through the back door, yes. Um, the one that we are right next to. Like, I haven't moved from. I'm right, right. there. <laughs> so there are six guards right on top of you. <laughs> yeah. Um Me too. I mean, um do I need to roll initiative? No, cuz okay. you're not there no. and uh, uh um Crowfoot, you're also not there. Oh, but I rolled a 20. <laughs> I got a plan for getting out of here. <laughs> you can keep your initiative if you want. Okay. Uh but yeah, uh, it has to be if you want to wait to roll 14. initiative you can. I rolled a 14. I have a 16. I didn't roll a 20. I got a 20 with my initiative bonus. Um, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a scheme. Yeah, so all of you are going to go before any of your opponents. Perfect. Um, but you are definitely in conflict with them. They are here. Uh, the guards have come in. And what you see, um, what's actually triggering the initiative is up on the second floor, there's a guy who comes out of the smaller room, uh, brown hair, stubble, um, kind of soldiery type, and he just uh, starts shooting from the second floor mm. into the room, not even like aiming, just starts shooting. He was just waiting for this. Kind of, kind of. Um, some incoherent screaming coming from his mouth. Like who's he even he's, shooting at? He's y'all. <laughs> he's, well, he's, he's shooting. Randomly shooting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, he may have drank some water. Um. So the guards seem a little taken aback by the fact that there's gunfire in here. Um, but you all have the um initiative and i missed the numbers i know um crowfoot yours is first but you're not 20. there well, uh, I, but if you want to go ahead and I resolve is, yours I, go I ahead and we'll me. do your first I crossed is after me so right, before I, me before me sorry i would like to pull a bead off of my exploding necklace and i would like to slide of hand throw it against the side of the um the administrative area that we're walking towards so that it looks like an explosion went off on the side of the building. Okay. Um, so go ahead and make a slide of hand check. Nice. Slide of hand. Oh, you also got a roll to know how many beads are on your necklace. Yeah, I, I have a party rolled for. Uh, oh, it I is it. Mm, somewhere in here. I haven't marked down. Uh, seven beads was what I rolled. Uh, that's not a great sleight of hand check. Uh, that's a 10. I'm rolling crap tonight, just to be clear. I've not rolled not, anything that's above a nine. <laughs> that is not going to do it. Muhammad is wise Aww. and sees you pluck a bead from your necklace and throw it against the wall, and then it explodes. And he's he's like, this isn't right. Well, she she like freaks out when it explodes. It's like, ah, there's an explosion, and she starts to take off. <laughs> so he uh, he draws his taser and points it at you, and he's about to shoot you with the taser. Oh snap! Because he saw what do you I, did. But did I not run away first? Um, you definitely ran. Okay. So yeah, whatever. Um, you've already done an action, so running would be. Whatever mm -hmm. your standard speed is, you could run that far unless 30 feet. Unless you have like the ability to dash as a bonus action. Um I th think I do somewhere. I thought I did. Um I know somebody does. I didn't remember if it was you or not. I can dash. As a uh, bonus action. Yep. 
Uh, maybe I don't. I don't see it. But I thought I read that I did. But no. So I just went 30 feet. Yeah. Uh, um, and I, I will try to hide as a bonus action because I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go ahead and, and just kind of duck, duck roll, around a corner. <laughs> yeah. Uh, give me a, a stealth check. See if I can do any better. 20. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, so you're pretty sure that you have um, successfully hidden. Uh, all right, so next would be Highcroft. Yes. Um, so is the door open or closed? Which door? The the door to leave out the back. Uh, it's open. They opened the door and lifted, like, they opened the door, lifted the gate, and then six of them walked inside. How in the world so did they do they're... all of that while I'm just standing there? <laughs> you probably moved away a little bit. Like they had to um... unlock the door <laughs> and the gate. <laughs> so you don't have to be right next to them. You could have moved away a little bit, but you're not that far away. Mm. Um, they're all in a clump, Yeah, the though. door is open. And the okay. hatch in the floor is open. Okay. Um, so, unless there's uh, let's see, how far is it from the lab to the door? Uh, probably at least a hundred feet. Okay. Um, it's like half the length of the building. Then I would like to. Is it still dark or dim in the in the facility, or all the lights on? Um, as they were entering, they turned on lights. The okay. lights going out was just to shock whoever was infiltrating. Uh, then I will. Um, move my 25 feet toward the door uh, and hide behind some of the equipment that's along the north wall. Okay. I'm wanting to put myself in a position to do a okay. sneak attack. Okay. So go ahead and give me a stealth check. Stealth. 19. All right. And Jank? Uh, where compared to me is the dude who's shooting like randomly? So you're down um, or you're near the um, entrance up here. Mm -hmm. And the guy that's shooting is up on the second floor around here. So he has full sight of me or not sight of me? Uh you definitely can both see each other. Like, okay, there's no obstruction. Okay. Um, I mean, is there a way for me to create an obstruction? Like, if I ran to one side or the other, I was confused by that diagram. It looked like I could run to one side and be blocked by a wall. So there's a wall here. Uh -huh. If you went this direction, you'd be heading towards where Highcroft is. Yeah, yeah. And, I want to. And there's go... machinery there, and you could easily hide from his line of sight yeah yeah i'm gonna uh yell whatever that line was about bright eyes um <laughs> and here's looking uh, at you bright eyes <laughs> <laughs> and uh throw a flashbang uh behind me as i run towards uh where highcroft went and i want to try to get to like the opposite Actually, I just want to go follow Highcroft uh, through. Okay. Wait, wasn't there a door there on that side? The, all the way at the far end. How? F but how, that, how far that away door is doesn't that? Ex like. Um, it's half the length of the building, so I said like roughly a hundred feet. Oh, God. which is probably underestimating, but we'll we'll work with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have crazy move speed. I only have twenty five, so. Um, 
just gonna try and make some distance, I guess, and hide within the machinery if that's possible. Like instead of running just straight, can I like kind of just jump into the machinery when I throw? Yeah, it? I mean it's it's manufacturing and packaging equipment, so it's like uh, like circular metal things that hold bottles as they spin. And, it's and covered. It's conveyor belts, and it's like lots yeah, of cover. There's there's ways that you can worm your way in and out of the machinery and use it for cover. Cool. Uh, That's what so I want yeah, go ahead and give me a stealth roll. A stealth roll? Or um, it's a yeah, dex, if you're trying it's to hide among the machinery. On the flashbang. Okay. Uh, is it? Do we not do the the flashbang first or? Um, so that it's a dex save. It's a dex save on all targets within the blast radius, and they'll gain the blinded and deafened conditions until the end of the next turn if they fail. All right. Um, two of them passed. The other four did not, and so they are blinded, you said? And blinded deafened. and deafened. Okay. Um, so then could I take an advantage on my stealth roll because only four of them could, only two of them can see me? Well, four of them just won't see you, but the <laughs> other two are fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what's your stealth? Uh, let me make that roll. What is it? It's plus dex. Oh, okay, okay. Oh no, oh no. It's eight. <laughs> I wasn't yeah, really trying so... for stealth in the first place, though. I just wanted cover so that when they <laughs> shoot, I can hide from the yep. bullets. That's okay. Uh, so you take cover among the machinery. Um, but they know I'm there. Yeah, they're pretty sure they know where you went. Uh, Pesky <laughs> B, um, I'm just going to go ahead and visit you before I move on to the you do hear Clara come over the intercom while she's hiding and say, "Destroy the destroy the pump, pesky bee. If you've got it, destroy it. The whatever it is, just blow it up." There's just pipes down here. Well, those yeah. are the pipes that they use to pump the water out. <laughs> blow them up. Keep going. So you've made it about. You had previously made it about 200 feet down. Did you want to continue down? Is that where did I where I got that message from, Clara? Yeah. Am I halfway down? Is that if, I, if I'm still on that landing when I get that message from Clara, then I'm going to start. I'm looking to see what artillery I have to break the pipes. Sounds. It sounds like it sounds like Clara was almost saying that you should destroy the pump too. So who has the C4? The, the pump's like up there, right? So I need to go back up. Is yes. the pump up? The, oh, the pump is on the surface, correct? That's that is generally the, odd. How there's a large piece of machinery that extends three stories up inside this building and then pesky b has discovered that it extends down into the ground as well oh so i can't i am by the pump yeah i mean okay. there's piping connected yeah. to that pump that okay. you have yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean it, would destroying this piping cause the pump to fall through uh it seems pretty secured to the rock mm -hmm. and ground what if you blocked up the pipe just so who them. has the mini grenade and stuff? I, I don't really. I, mean, I, I assume a... you have the C4 because you, you you went inside where the pump was. So I assume even if you didn't have it when we infiltrated, somebody would have given it to you. to you. I can say I definitely don't have the C4. I would have told you specifically I shouldn't have it. Not All right. If I, I, would yeah, say if I, have... I did have one block of C4. All right. So that's fine. And Pesky B, you've got one of the blocks of C4. All right. I don't know how this stuff works. So I'm going to put it on the pipe down and I, as soon as I it goes off remotely right so I can get away it has a remote detonator so you can right. plant it um, and I'm, and then leave I'm planting it then on the pump down there halfway through and going back up 100 feet up the ladder okay. up the hatch so that gets you halfway back up That's because you were 200 climbing. feet down <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty fast I'm 35 we're just, speed we're, we're just eyeballing. well with your dash you'd be about 105 <laughs> feet per round yeah yeah I'm just, you're about halfway back up and we'll revisit you again shortly. Uh, so next would be um, the shooty guy. 
up on the <laughs> second floor. Also a spy uh, term. Shitty guy. Shitty yeah. Guy. Yep. Um, and uh, Saturn also. So, um, oh, geez. Imagine I hear over the intercom, Highcroft going, we got a shooty guy over here. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is um, you hear Saturn's voice shouting and saying, what in the hell are you doing, Brick? And uh, she, you see a form uh, appear at the door behind where Brick is. And she, she's like, who are you shooting at? What are you doing? Um, he starts to turn toward her. He's still shooting the gun. It is just shooting the entire way, um, putting holes in the wall. Uh, and he, while shooting the gun, swings it at her as a physical attack. Oh, geez. So... Sounds like a bit more than a physical attack. So did she call him Brick? Yes. I will forever picture him as Brick Tamlin from Anchorman now. <laughs> Especially I considering... I no idea who that is. <laughs> did you get a grenade from Brick? <laughs> so, uh... See, I don't know why I made my NPCs attack each other, because that is hard to figure out for me. Um, she swerves and dodges out of the way um, and gives him a, a kick in the center and it tips him off balance and he flips over the ledge and falls down to the floor below. Is he still firing um, the gun? He is still firing the gun. The what? gun is How still firing. How many bullets does it have? <laughs> it is an automatic uh, like automatic Rifle, rifle and yeah. it is just how, going. No, but how does it possibly have enough bullets to still be going <laughs> well it's only been like six seconds yeah <laughs> that, that would be enough it should be emptied by now <laughs> so um once again spy movie not real world <laughs> bullets are infinite in spy movie guns um they're yeah, not in and... ours we have a limited ammo we have to reload the um about this time the six guards that are over there you know four of them are blind and um and deafened at the moment and the other like they all just start um acting really bizarre and uh one of them starts banging their head into the wall um one of like others are just like starting to like hit each other with their fists um they really have devolved into a, like a melee among themselves. Um, uh, what's going on over there? <laughs> uh, someone's been in their own stash. All of them. <laughs> Someone drank the water? Yeah, you don't want to do that. Mm. Rather tasty, though. <laughs> Did you That'd try be cool it? to make them force drink their How water? How would I try it? <laughs> I haven't even had a chance to. Um, yeah, so... And I would not uh, because my constitution is too low. I would fail every saving throw. <laughs> so Saturn's turn was taken up dealing with Brick. Uh, the guards are attacking each other. Uh, Mohammed moves forward um, but can't find Crowfoot. Um and starts kind of searching around to see if he can suss out where you went, uh, but doesn't seem able to pinpoint where you are. Um, so that puts us back at your turn, Crowfoot. So I say over the intercom, blow up the, the facility. I'm going to go blow up the product, and then we got to get out of here. I don't know what y'all did, but I'm going to have to burn a cover identity because of y'all. How are you going <laughs> to blow up the product you don't have the c4 i got a necklace of explosions <laughs> the whole throw six the beads whole, throw the, the whole, whole six beads worth of explosions ready to go don't ask questions who has the micro grenade who has the micro grenade someone does well, you do. yeah clara I mean, has you it. Could, clara could also have the I mean, micro if it's, grenade. if it's small i might have it yeah i didn't micro, want the c4 because yeah. i was like um, yeah, yeah no fair. so uh highcroft you had the um 
the other brick of C4 and Crowfit, yes. you've got the micro grenade and your necklace. So. so I'm so I saw the whole facility earlier. I'm going ahead in the straightest path that I can, just full tilt running towards where the storage of the water that was ready to go is. Sure. Uh, give me a stealth check to um, to head there because uh, Muhammad I mean, is still yeah, looking for you. He's looking for me. I'm going to hide after my turn. 15. <laughs> uh, 15 will do it. You right. manage to slip past um, and proceed <laughs> on towards the um, the shipping area. Without Leave a note that detected. says, don't give that water to your kids and just like set it <laughs> on a table before I go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. So um, you should be able to get there next round. Uh, Highcroft, it's your turn. Yes. Um, so there were some pallets of product still in this portion of the facility, right? There is a staging area that has product on it. Yes. Okay. Um, I would like to continue to make my way there. Because I made it 25 feet so, last time and I was 100 feet away from the door and it's on the other side of the door. Is yes, this right? it is on the other side of the door past where the guards are um, mauling each other. Yes. Um, how long are they blinded and deafened? One turn. Okay, so on your next turn. Yeah, so right after you finish of... going, they will be able to see able to, in here. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. So I am, I am making my way toward that product with the C4. That is my intention. So, okay. so um, you just want to use all of your, use your action to move on your way there or? Since I'm already hidden, can I stay hidden and move? Um, no, possibly you I'll, you'll have to have roll to, another stealth you have, check. To, you have to roll a stealth check again yeah yeah so, um, I'd so have logistical question we're spies we all have seen this pump do we think it would it could be destroyed with one thing of c4 or will it take need both things of c4 to destroy it you can damage it beyond repair with yeah. one okay yeah and and so you would you would all know and pesky i'm I'll let you retcon if you want. <clears throat> Putting the C4 down on the pipe itself would not be best. You want to put the C4 on the the part that's sticking up out of the ground. Except, like, yes, but what if placing the C4 in that tunnel actually collapses the tunnel? Yeah, that's what I was thinking, is that like, if it blows up down there, they're going to have to dig back to get like to they it. lose access it's, to even get to the water. So if let, let if that's your intention is to collapse that tunnel, then yes. Yeah, that's what then that would be situation, the you proper need to place put it to on put the it. wall though, not the pipe, probably. I mean, is it not gonna well, just explode putting it on the pipe? Big... The pipe is in the gr embedded within the, the rock. It's basically yeah. they bored out a hole and then they dug a tunnel that's got a ladder in it next oh, to it. So it's not a it's not like a big tunnel. I was imagining it sounded like it was really narrow. Okay, I was yeah, imagining no, a really big tunnel. So I was imagining like a manhole saw. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like a manhole, but the manhole is just really long. Oh, yeah, that's real <laughs> narrow then. So yeah, if you are wanting to collapse the tunnel along with the pipe, then yeah, you've got it in the right spot. Um, so Highcroft, you're traveling. Um, yes, and then, and then stealthing I'll... at the end. Um. Yes. Let's see. Um. Uh, no, I, I was trying to figure out if I could get there to attack, but I have 75 feet to cover. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so I'll have to roll stealth again. I'll move my 25 feet and then I'll get back into the equipment. Okay. Um, and what's your stealth check? 24. Oh, have you already placed the C4 on the extra product? No, that's where I'm headed. Okay. All right, uh, so it is Jenk's turn. What is she doing? Uh, by the equipment that you're referring to, is that the equipment that I'm currently standing within? Yes. yes. Oh, I was about to blow it up anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, B, how are you doing? How soon do you think you'll be back up here? I'm keeping going. That was my last turn. I should be able to be up <laughs> at the end of this turn. <laughs> yes, in character, we referred to turn. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, like B B's like, I'm almost there. Just give me a minute. 
<laughs> like tight like six it. seconds or something. <laughs> I, I like to think of B saying, <laughs> I got one turn left. <laughs> one turn. <laughs> I'm halfway there. I'm more than halfway there. <laughs> All right, I'll buy you a turn. And uh, <laughs> Jenk, uh, who's in the equipment right now and sees, you know, the chaos of the the dude who's still laying on the ground, still shooting his unending mag of yep. uh, of <laughs> just emptying it into the ceiling. I guess. Um, I mean, he he may have a chain, a dude like that. <laughs> except, like. It, <laughs> Hey man, Rambo. He is, a, <laughs> he is a British brick. He is um, a former soldier oh, wait, who uh, is a spy. And do you have yeah. to? Would it take a turn for me to see, like, just to look at the window to see if Saturn is like right there, or would I be able to immediately see that? Um, I mean, just uh, as part of just being aware of what's going yeah. on and looking around. Yeah, I mean, she's not really hiding. She just kicked her mm -hmm. um, compatriot over the side as he tried to attack her with a assault rifle. What does she look like? Saturn is um, basically she looks like Grace Jones. She's got dark skin. Um, she's currently wearing a black headscarf, uh, has form-fitting black armor on. Um, her face, aside from being a little bit upset at the moment, generally a kind face. Um, you can't really see her eyes, but I will go ahead for you and the audience. Just her eyes are have a little bit of steel in them. Um, and she's pretty confident. She's about 30 years old, probably. Uh, if you are familiar with the uh, facial uh, normalities of the Somalian people, you would be able to identify her as probably of Somali descent. Mm -hmm. Um, Imagine the next words you're going to say. Well, I'll shoot her. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to decide right now if it's smarter to either throw a uh, exploding necklace bead at the equipment as I run out of it, toward, as I run towards Highcroft, or if I should just point my gun at Saturn and say, like, tell her, stop. Like, if you move, I'll pull the trigger. Uh, which do you want to do just depends how much risk the dude on the ground has of accidentally shooting me uh, his body is convulsing he's shooting stuff around uh, he's pretty uncontrolled at the moment mm -hmm. yeah you there know doesn't what? seem to be intention to what he's doing okay yeah from, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna yell hey Saturn and have my uh, SMG pointed directly at her. Say, if you move, I shoot. So give me an intimidation. Is intimidation yeah. on It his? is a check that I yes. don't want to Yes, please give in. me intimidation. <laughs> <laughs> if I fail it, I guess I'm pulling the trigger, huh? Uh, <laughs> 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 um... <laughs> Okay. Like Let's on see. accident, though, that's how you fail to intimidate. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to shoot you. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, let's see. A seven. Looks like. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> seven is not going to. Um... She's not intimidated. So. Yeah, she's not intimidated. <laughs> so, what does she try to. Does she. How do I know that she's not intimidated? Like I said, yeah. don't move. Well, so far she hasn't moved because it's not her turn yet. <laughs> oh, okay. I see. Yeah. You don't generally know if a check fails or succeeds. Ah, uh, I see. I see. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's all I'm allowed to do, right? Or do I still have more that I can do? Well, you can move if you want. Ah. Or if you've got any bonus actions. Well, I can't move, though, because I've got a gun pointed up. Still moving with a gun pointed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a great demo. I mean, that's, if, if you want to move while covering her, you can do that. That is uh, fine. That is a thing that is possible. I'm just trying to think of if it would even be smart for me to move. I guess I have to move because uh, Highcroft wants to blow up what I'm in. So uh, I'm not blowing up this machinery. 
You're not blowing up this equipment that I'm currently standing in that you right. said you were going to blow up? Oh. No, no I'm, I'm blowing. I'm, no, I'm blowing up the product that's on the other side of the door that we came through. And I'm blowing up the pump There's... from the hatch down there. Yeah. Yes. Nobody so is your currently necklace... targeting the equipment you're in. Oh, perfect. Right. Okay. Yes. I thought that it the equipment great... I was in was covered in product and that. <laughs> okay, okay. I don't think so. That wasn't what I understood. I understood that there was some on pallets on the other side that needs I mean to be... do I have anything else that se seems smart to do uh, people on the one side are convulsing people on the other side are convulsing uh, I mean you know, if you want to blow up the product with your there's not a lot I could put the I don't think I have an equipment. extra is my extra action I mean, I guess I didn't really do anything other than yell. Am I allowed to also throw a bead across the room and see if I can blow up the... So making an intimidation I... check would be an action. Yeah. Okay, So gotcha. you, you used your action to make the intimidation. So now all I can do is move. Or you not can move, move or a bonus uh, if you want to. Oh, I'm obviously just going to stand here. I've got cover. It's okay. the smartest place to um, Pesky, I have just been inserting you at in the initiative here if you want to roll initiative you can but you can also just go here <laughs> which is what we were doing um i think for time since we are gonna run over uh i'm just gonna ask you to go are you just ascending to the top pesky pesky, pesky. oh sorry that was me yeah i'm sitting yeah. at the top yeah <laughs> great um so it'll take your entire uh, move to get back up to the top of the hatch. Um, as you're approaching up there, you can definitely hear the sound of gunfire, the sound of wet fists smacking into people, people's heads banging against concrete walls. Um, uh, there's a lot of cacophony up there. Um, so we get there. Um, Brick is finally runs out of ammunition uh, and just starts beating himself over the head with the gun. Um, <laughs> uh, Saturn does not stay where she is. Um, give me a perception check, Jank. Perception. Another eight. Yeah, uh, she just kind of disappears. You don't know where she goes. Hey, at least she didn't shoot me. Uh, <laughs> score. <laughs> um, so she, she just vanishes. Um, Highcroft, if you want to also, you can try a perception check to see if you know where she went. Let's see. Ooh, a nine. Yeah, um, you do see where she went. She rolled really low. She just Yay. rolled slightly better than Jank. Uh, she's, <laughs> she's just slipped along the side and is headed down to the first floor um, on the ramp that's there. Uh, Can I whisper that in the comm? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I would have um, been. Jank would have been like, she's headed to the don't, first floor. <laughs> if you move, move, I'll shoot. And then, <laughs> then she's gone. He's like, yeah, I should have seen that coming. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was like, oh, she's actually over here. <laughs> so at this point, the um, uh, the guards are incapacitating themselves and each other. Um, really. They have taken themselves out. Saturn is the only one up that you need to deal with at this point, um, at least in this building. Uh, so that takes us back to Crowfoot because Saturn just moved. Run into that building. All right. With all the product in it. Uh, how are you getting inside? Uh, what's, what's the, is it a door? What do we got? Uh, yeah, so there's a loading bay. There's a door on the in the loading bay area, and there's a door in uh, like a, a bay door on the side that is um, 
where it faces the manufacturing building. Which one of the doors would give me the easiest angle for throwing something towards the giant wall full of product? So the bay doors facing the manufacturing facility are directly opposite that big long wall. Mm -hmm. The other one would be at an angle to it. And so it's a, it's like a big bay door, right? Yeah. Uh, probably not something I could just like lift. Um, so it's a, it's weighted to allow one person to open it. Like mm. it is meant for a single person to be able to open and close this bay door. Um, so uh, yeah, you could potentially do it. I go no time for stealth, and I throw one of the beads at the <laughs> the door. Okay. The, the, like the big floating doors. Um, All right. Uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and say you you manage to get that door open. You blow. <laughs> Literally the broad side of a barn door first. The situation. explosion <laughs> just just knocks the the door open. I'm the so you're there. The human sized door on the loading bay is what you managed to blow open. Okay. I mean, I just in the thing. I go y'all y'all ruin this. <laughs> no stealth. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I, I look inside. I, I use my action to throw that thing. But what do I see inside? Um. Yeah. I mean, it's just that same building same as you saw it before anybody in here it doesn't seem like it no okay i'm gonna hide inside the door as a bonus action and uh get ready to blow some product up next turn mm, 10 all right not a good, not a good hide <laughs> all right uh hi croft all right um let's see it's, uh so uh i would say if there's not much product in here i would ask jank if she can destroy the rest of the product and i will go ahead and put my c4 on this equipment the bottling equipment the one that i'm and then inside we'll, of yes and we'll remotely detonate it when we remotely detonate the, the other c4. c4 so not while we're standing inside of it mm -hmm. ideally terrified of saturn shooting it but uh as long as I would that definitely, doesn't happen. <laughs> I would definitely want to put it on the back side where we are mm -hmm. um, for that reason. Saturn's coming down for the second floor to the first floor still, right? That's what she, yes. Yeah. That's yeah. what I saw. Right? But I, like, uh, if she's this fast, if she shoots, I feel like she's smart enough to blow us up instead of just trying to vaguely hit me. Well, I think I think if her saying, job is put it is... somewhere where mm -hmm. it can't yeah. be she shot, can't see there's it. not an angle. She, she it. can't shoot it or see it because nice. it's dark, right? That's yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's bright in here now, but she can't see me. I was hit. Bright in here. I don't now. think. Oh. Um, and also, if she works for this company, it does behoove her not to blow up their equipment probably oh, that's like true. when we destroy things Solve the that the for boss us. likes we get in trouble you know mm -hmm. um that's never happened before i don't know why you're bringing that up <laughs> um so i would like to put the c4 on the bottling equipment with my action um do i need to make a check for that or am i able to just do that you can Put it on there it's clay or plastic you mold it on and excellent you've done it before. um and then i will move if it seems like the guards are kind of like taking care of themselves then i'll still move my regular s speed and not hide because i don't have an action to do that um so i would still be almost 25 feet away from the door i think at this point uh because i've had three turns of moving 25 feet a turn um yep so you're but... about 25 feet from the door and the um dead bodies of the six guards it's very disappointing um yeah so i would say over the um over the comms uh we should take uh maybe one of these with us i'm not very strong i would also throw that in there um is there any are there any bottles like anywhere nearby that i could grab no you you mean take some of the product okay. with us that's what you're well, i think we should take one of the guards to 
test. Oh, okay. Just drop them off. We'll just drop them off with the army, and the army can deal with it. No. Okay. That's a terrible plan. Blow the stuff up. <laughs> let's get out of here. The army's not going to help us. This is literally what they're here for. That's not what they're here for. Where world do you live in? And they're there to protect the falling place, right? That's right. They're yeah, there. they're just here to goof the, off and blow stuff up. Army is there to destroy the neutropon next door that is yeah. contaminated with ergo. Goof with off the same stuff thing up. that's going on here. Yeah, so I'm 25 feet from the door. That's what I'm able to do. <laughs> okay. Um, Jank. Uh, how far am I from the product zone that I wanted to blow up? The, like I'm in the equipment, right? The and, staged product that yes. Highcroft was going for. Um, uh, yeah. So you are roughly about the same distance as Highcroft at this point because Highcroft is... has caught up to where you are. So you're 30 feet. Oh, perfect. Is that like throwing distance it's... of like a tiny bead that's heavy? Um, no, because it's on the other side of a wall. Oh, Wait, can I see the map again? <laughs> We have to get around a little Why corner it, thing. You don't, you don't have a remote detonator. Why are you? Not, need that? You're like the, you're huh? like here. Well, the C4 and is it's already here, where I am. And there's a wall here. There's a. Where's the entryway? It's right next right to right here. It. Yep. So we're yeah. over Wait, near how, there. So how would I get feet. into there? Would it take a turn? Uh, or would it just take movement through here. Okay. All so right, it's then probably I... at least a turn to get there. Because you only have 25 feet of movement, too, oh, right? What? Yeah. With 50 uh, feet, like if you... Oh, that's 50 feet away. Okay. If, okay. if you use your action to dash and go 50 feet, you'll be there. You just won't be able to do anything this turn. I'm confused about what's happening. Didn't Highcroft already put C4 on the product. No. That's what no. I thought no. you can I can't, C4 on I can't the get, machinery. Yeah, on I can't machinery. get to it. So I the, can't. I'm too pump? far away. No. No. The, that's the actual different. bottling equipment. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm yeah, all right. That's I fine. put C4 I on confused. the pump underneath. Yeah, I was I was thought okay. Yeah. We're good. I'm too far away for the for the product. Um you got that drone on you? We still have the drone stashed somewhere. Drone it's, is up on, on the roof. And the door's open. And do you have the controls? Mm-hmm. Are we allowed Are you to destroy to... our property? <laughs> yeah. There was Why no wasn't... instruction about your... Just build a, build a client. The producer's like, I have to return this in 30 days, uh, so I need it back in like good condition. So, are you wanting to deliver some um, beads? Uh, I was either thinking like, uh, like roll a bunch of beads into the room, just like, like run 25 feet, and then just kind of just try to get them into the room, and then you just pilot the drone to crash into them, uh, <laughs> or alternatively, so the drone doesn't really move a whole lot faster than you. It moves 40 feet around. Oof. Yeah. Just, Dang. just go throw the things at it. Just yeah. run your 50 feet yeah, I'll run and my 50 you'll be feet. there I'll and you can 50. throw the beads I'm, in I'm gonna run my, I'm going to run my 50 feet. I just wanted to <laughs> use the drone. The drone was fun. Yeah. yeah. No, I get it. Um, pesky. Mm -hmm. Yes. What Am you I doing? You, you're at the top of the shaft. Okay, so if I'm back up now, do I want to... I'm only good at melee, so I need to go and attack her if we're going to attack her. Otherwise, I need to get out of there. So you are closest to her. Aren't you still on the other side of a wrought iron fence, though? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you got to get out. You need to get over the fence, because things are going to blow up soon. But should I get out over the fence towards... I mean, I have to choose between going towards her or going towards the door, right? Are we trying to yeah, kill, it, are we trying to attack her? Or are we trying to get out right now? I mean, Clara's like, I'm blowing the stuff up. I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to get out. I'm going to, I'm going to climb over the side towards the to get out the door away from her. I'm sorry. All right. To the back. Uh, just give me dexterity. Some acrobatics, maybe. Yeah, acrobatics. Acrobatics. Some, like feet between the wrought iron bars. 
leap over the top. 12 plus 5 is 17. Mm, very ninja-like. 17. Yeah. Up and over. And then is that my turn or do I have action or what do I... Um, now I'm running. So that first. is that is your movement. So if you want to take an action, you can take an action. I guess I would tell Highcroft that you can blow it now. I'm ready. I mean, you all should probably leave Be the building outside. before you blow it up. Yep. But... I'm like, could you? Are you still in the building? Because don't blow it up then. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just <laughs> like, it's ready to go. Whenever you're ready. Okay. You can okay. Blow it up. All right. Yeah. Right. Whenever you're ready, it's so good to go. I, I'm I in take the that building. To mean that you are not taking any actions. I mean, you could take an action to move yeah. further. Should yeah. So I... just oh, sorry, Pesky, I forgot. Just I'm still going towards the door. So if I jump, okay. if I could do anything else, I'm. All right, so Saturn uh, comes over, checks to make sure that uh, Brick is dead, uh, turns and looks, surveys what's going on and says, what in the hell is going on? I go, that's fair. <laughs> Why did you all come in here and what is going on with my guards? They've been so, drinking your water. Guards, where are my guards? What do you mean drinking the water? So at this point, um, I'm going to just drop us out of initiative because there's not really a need for the initiative unless you plan on attacking Saturn. Um, I'm interested in leaving, and I will tell her that the water's contaminated before I do. <laughs> so uh, what do you say to her about the water? How do you convey the situation? Uh, the water's dangerous. There's contamination in the area. It's the same as um, I don't remember Neutropon. the name of the company. Yeah, Neutropon down the street. All right. Um, go ahead and give me a persuasion. For sure. Doesn't she like see all of the deceased guards at her feet? Yeah, well, that's what she's asking about. What did you, you do? You can to my have guards? advantage on the persuasion. <laughs> Aha. Uh -huh. Advantage. That's trying to get. 20. Let's go. Yeah. Um, you definitely have convinced her um, of what is going on. Uh, she says, uh, you know, we definitely can't let this product go uh give me a minute um goes back up to the second floor and comes back out with additional c4 oh see all y'all had to do was ask nice yeah <laughs> man and helps you she just has this uh, sitting around like did they just keep c4 it's just, yeah. Well, yeah, they're a spy agency the same as we are. No, but uh, inside you hear... of the plant, it's just yeah. C4. Just it was already there. here. We didn't even need to bring our own. She's ask, a spy. Uh, so, nicely. so you hear Clara go, who are y'all talking to? Who's giving you C4? Uh, I is... say it's Saturn. I think maybe she agrees. The C4 Saturn. is contaminated. We, like the planet? We can't let this continue. <laughs> That's what I say to Saturn. Yeah, she's like, uh, we definitely can't we let on the this, same page. We can't let this out into the world to continue causing this. Think if this had gotten to New York City, what what would that have been like? Um. So yeah, she helps you to uh, set up C four in strategic places around the plant. Um, she's not even questioning then, why it was covered <laughs> up or anything like. She lives in this world. She knows. Oh. She was yeah. convinced. Don't stop asking questions, Jake. <laughs> she was convinced. Um, so then as you all are leaving, she pulls or she triggers the um, the chemical contamination alarm uh, to evacuate any guards that are remaining. Yeah, let's um, get Muhammad so, out of here. Can, can I try to slide of hand a bottle of this water? Sure. While we're like milling around, sure. um, a twenty-one is my sleight of hand. Yeah, twenty-one is gonna go unnoticed. Um, so you managed to grab a bottle. Um, 
I go back and smash that set that was in the administrative offices. That case, <laughs> I'm like, no kids are getting poisoned on my watch. <laughs> yep. So you all um, exit, and as you're exiting the area, um, how are you exiting? Are you going back out the back or out through the front, or? Well, if we go at the back, back towards that path, that's the path where all the guards are supposed to evacuate towards. That is one of the exits. The guard who's at the, honestly, both of the guards are on the other side of the building and they're going to exit to the street. Oh yeah, I go, I go toward, I go out the front, like screaming, like yeah, sure. something's okay. out, like uh, if, uh, if Muhammad's up there, I'm going to avoid him. But the rest like, of us <laughs> aren't supposed to have even been there. So yeah, right. Right. We are yeah, we should go out the back right. and so fly the drone. The yes, back. you remember the Off. drone, good. Yep. Um, Crowfoot, you leave through the front. You do see that um, Muhammad and Leffler have both exited. They don't seem to have uh, had any of the water good. and they so they seem fine. Um, the rest of you exit through the back. <clears throat> when do you trigger the C4? Once the drone is safely out of <laughs> harm's way. Make sure that Saturn's safe too. The drone Saturn has protected. exited with you. Okay. Yeah. Um I would say basically just past the minimum safe distance. Okay. We're not leaving a lot you, of once we get room. in the, the, the tree line, I think, so that we're not right. illuminated by any lights from um, you trigger the C4, the plant explodes. Um, the army reacts very quickly to that. Uh, they were, you know, on patrol and whatnot, but the plant next to them blowing up. Uh, oh, somebody they, noticed. Yeah. <laughs> so somebody who is driving the SUV once you all no get back yet. to the SUV. Oh, we already made it back. Wow. Yeah, we're just skipping ahead. You're in the SUV. Who's driving? I'm in an Uber. Who's the good driver? <laughs> I'm not a... I can't do SUVs. I can do cars. I can drive them. To... They're in my list of things that I've got. Would that be on with. something? It yeah, should be under your proficiencies. Yeah, yeah. I have uh, I cars, heavy goods, vehicles, <clears throat> ships, and unmanned. Yeah, Jake, so I, I think would say you're our gal. You're proficient. Uh, go ahead and give me. Um, I'm going to ask for a stealth roll, um, okay. just to see if you can uh, leave the area without the army taking notice of you. All right. Does my Uber get stopped? <laughs> <laughs> your yeah, Uber, yeah, yeah. Is the Uber getting a stealth roll? Um, <laughs> I think make your a roll Uber for gets the Uber driver. Stopped. The army checks on who they are and they show identification and you leave. All right, here we go. See, Uber was the way to go and get it was the way to go. Uber was but a black SUV coming out of the woods right after a building exploded. Mm -hmm. Um I need a stealth roll. Also yeah, hashtag. Yeah, that is uh oh, no, we were behind. Yeah, not sponsored by Uber. But I thought we went out is the this a, back is this a into the saving throw? So I jumped ahead to when you had gotten this, to the SUV and you're leaving. Is this a saving um, throw? Okay. Or is this no. just a dex roll? This is a stealth check. Oh, stealth check. Okay. Uh, then that would be 14. Yeah. Um, I'll get missled to death. <laughs> you failed the stealth check, but um, sadly, because of time, I can't do the entire car chase sequence, uh, which I would love to do. And there is a wonderful mechanic in this system uh, for car chases, but we are already 20 minutes over time. So uh, you lead True. the uh, army through town in a car chase with your SUV and a um, you know arm uh, armored truck chasing you. Uh, you manage to dodge in and out of all of the pedestrians and other traffic that's on the road. 
uh, there's smoke from the uh, burning remains of the water plant behind you. Uh, you managed to successfully evade the army. Um, you dump the SUV and uh, take a cab back to the motel. Um, this whole time, like, <laughs> Clara has been in the hotel and been like, what are y'all doing? That sounds real exciting out there. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I don't want to be there because it sounds like you might die, but it sounds exciting. <laughs> and uh, you come back and you've got Saturn with you. Um, Saturn honestly was just a paid spy for the syndicate. Um, you've got evidence that they had contaminated uh, stuff. Uh, you can show information that they knew about it and were planning to ship anyway. Um, she definitely is not on board for that. And uh, over time, as we move forward into the future, um, becomes a new uh, agent for syndicate, or for, sorry, for um, sanitation. Um, Recruiting. There's, there's <laughs> one point in time when Clara's like, all right, team huddle, everybody. All right, come here. So you know, it worked out well this time, but just for the record, <laughs> in the future, don't bring back enemy spies to our home base after a mission. <laughs> just not a good idea. What do you mean? <laughs> so, um, as you slip out of town the next day, the crowds are focused on the Bamberley plant uh, and the staged destruction of the Neutropon. During your travels that day, you hear reports that the army and the youths in town clashed over the Neutropon stores with the army opening fire using the laser tanks. Dr. Michael Advowson, the UN observer, and 63 civilians were killed before the Neutropon was destroyed. You prevented mass psychosis from the water, but many threats to life on Earth remain. As you relax into your seats on the airplane leaving Denver, a flight attendant hands you each a drink with a small thumb drive attached to the bottom. Your next mission is already here, it seems. Do I have a that different drink? Tank? Better not be water. <laughs> what? The <laughs> drink better not be water. Cheers. Um, so I hope you all had fun, uh, yeah. audience. I, I yeah. hope it was fun to watch. Um, if you liked what you saw here tonight, uh, please join us for our next one shot at 6 p.m. on December 4th. Uh, Jonathan will be the GM for that session. And I think we're doing a follow up to the Alice in Wonderland. Uh, no. So next week we are doing Neil Gaiman's The Sandman oh, series. Oh, The Sandman on December 6th. Yeah. Awesome. Just, and uh, is that you or was that Kayla? Uh, that I'll be GMing that one. Um, okay. and it should be very fascinating trip. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for that. In that three weeks fun. on December 4th. Three weeks on December 4th. Is that three weeks? Oh my gosh. I yeah, we, we don't skipped have any sense of time at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. Uh, also, if you're interested in joining us and taking part playing in one of the role of play games, let us know at bit.ly slash role of play that has a capital R and a capital P. Um, the link should be in chat for you now. Uh, if you want to know more about the newly released game system that we were using today, which is a uh, 5e system designed to replicate the um, hijinks that ensue in heist movies like Ocean's Eleven or spy movies like James Bond or Mission Impossible, the wonderful system uh, that was made by Black Cats Gaming. Uh, you can find more on the spy game at blackcatsgaming.com or you can find them on Twitch or Twitter at follow black cats. Um, and really that's all I've got for tonight unless uh, somebody else has something that they want to share. Oh. Just excited to have everybody show up. Thank you, yeah. uh, Anthony, for yeah, your for the game uh, your wonderful GMing. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I hope that the audience enjoyed, and we'll see you all next time. Oh for wait, more... one one last little producer note. Um, you know, uh, dog, you're not going to bark on me right now. <laughs> uh, this is this is your producer, Alice, over the speaker. Uh, we also have an email if you wanted to email us, and I'll put it in the chat in a second, which is rolleofplay-g at vt.edu. So in just in case you wanted to ask us a question or, you know, had comments, any of that. So uh, thanks. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Alice. Um, all right. Uh, 
whoever's left or watching on VOD, thanks for joining us. And I hope we see you again for more The Role of Play. Thanks. Bye. Oh, yeah, I turned this off. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. I love that you all waved. We're not off there yet. <laughs>